Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto leaves Konoha because of Tsunade. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Two figures trudged slowly on their way to the gates of Konoha. The figures were none other than Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha. Anyone could see the blood that drenched both of the boys. Yet still they continued forward. Sasuke Uchiha missing Nen of Konoha hung loosely on the back of Naruto. The raven-haired boy floated in and out of consciousness yet the few times where he was awake he never failed to curse the blonde. The blonde on the other hand never lost the tired smile that played on his lips. I finally did it, Naruto thought happily. He couldn't wait to see the surprise and shock of all his friends when he dragged Sasuke's sorry ass through Konoha. Thinking of their battle Naruto knew it had been nothing short of epic, yet he came through in the end for everybody. With one final Razen Shuriken and Chidori Naruto had pulled through. The only thing the boy could think about was how he finally kept his promise to Sakura and even though Sasuke cursed him Naruto wanted to believe that the boy he thought of as a brother was happy to be home to. It had been two weeks ago exactly that Naruto had snuck out of Konoha silently through the night. The reason was because two days prior the village had gotten the first intel in months of Sasuke Uchiha's current location. Naruto had jumped at the chance, yet Tsunade instead wanted to ignore it. Her better judgment reasoned that it was most likely a trap. We aren't strong enough yet. You aren't strong enough yet Naruto, she had told him dismissively. Naruto though had kept fighting tooth and nail for her to let him go. In the end she still told him no. Naruto then finally took matters into his own hands, leaving a short note saying he would back as soon as he could the blonde went to retrieve his wayward friend. He couldn't let a chance like this slip through their fingers. Finally after two weeks of his disappearance Naruto saw the gates of his village coming into view. He could feel the smile grow on his face. Everything was going to get better. After years and years of training he had finally accomplished his goal. Soon I'll be taking that hat from you next granny, he chuckled out to himself. With Sasuke captured he could focus on his dream of becoming Hokage. His journey had already started when Tsunade all but demanded that Naruto would be her successor. It had been one of the happiest moments of Naruto's life. For the past couple months he had apprenticed himself to Tsunade dedicating his time and work to learning the ins and outs of being a cage. Naruto started to laugh, but it came out instead in a fit of bloody coughs. Vaguely he felt blood run from the corners of his mouth. Naruto's legs shook uneasily beneath him. The weight of his own body coupled with the dead weight of the Uchiha's was proving to be more of a challenge than he thought. He cursed loudly at his own frustration. Damn it, he was right there. He didn't have much farther and all he had to do was push through. What Naruto continued to ignore though was the damage the gaping hole in his right shoulder was doing to his body. Even with Kayubi it had hurt like a bitch and Naruto had found he couldn't stop the bleeding. He wasn't exactly a medic nin and the only thing he could do was patch it up best he could with torn cloth from his jumpsuit. In the end he decided to pay it no mind. There was nothing he could so he had to move forward. He could have Grandma Tsunade patch it up when he got home anyway. As he continued to walk forward he kept himself busy by going over the battle he had just fought with Sasuke. He couldn't help but compare it to the one they had 4 years ago when they were 13 in the Valley of End. This time though, I didn't hold anything back, the thought had crossed his mind that if he really wanted to bring Sasuke home he couldn't afford to pull any punches. In the end Naruto had done what he needed to, but at the same time Naruto thought he hadn't hurt the Teme too badly. He figured that in his heart he knew he couldn't hurt someone he held so close to his heart. Naruto looked up, only 50 feet stood between him and the gates and blue eyes finally saw the familiar forms of Chunin guards Azumo and Kotetsu. He watched as eventually the pair advanced towards them with increasing pace. It was unfortunate that at that moment Naruto's coughing fit started to reoccur. His free hand came to cover his mouth as he struggled to continue to walk forward. Removing the hand he saw it covered in his own blood. It was then he was pretty sure that more blood was coming up than supposed to. Despite the situation the boy silently laughed to himself. I guess I overdid it again huh? He thought to himself, then again you always did push me to my limits Sasuke. Glancing over his shoulder he stared at the raven. He had long ago passed out again and while Naruto wouldn't it admit it aloud he was grateful for the silence. He realized that even the Kayubi had left him alone since after their fight. 
which was rare as the Kayubi always had an insult aimed at the blonde. The guards were coming closer now and he saw that they had broken into a run. The Chunin had finally realized exactly who was making their way towards Konoha. Naruto saw their hands wave in the air in greeting and he even thought he saw smiles on their faces. Naruto smiled again in return. They were happy to see him. That in turn made him pretty happy too. From the past few days events Naruto finally began to feel everything catch up to him all at once. He realized immediately that he had been running purely on his adrenaline to get this far. Between the gaping hole in his chest, Sasuke's dead weight on his back, and the long tedious walk home he was tired. Naruto Uzumaki was tired. Attempting to keep his eyes forward he saw the images of Kotetsu and Azumo fading. Maybe, he thought, it wouldn't be so bad if I let Kotetsu and Azumo carry us the rest of the way. The pair of Chunin were almost to Naruto now. With the setting sun in the sky Naruto thought he could almost touch them. Letting out one last weak chuckle he put his hand out to reach them. He hoped to catch on to something as he felt his body sway. Naruto's hand only grabbed air as began his descent to the ground. Naruto. The Chunins called out his name. They sounded worried about the young genin. They don't need to worry, Naruto thought reminiscently. No matter what hardships I may face, no matter what pain may come onto me. I will always get back up again. For my village, for my friends, for everyone who ever doubted me I will always rise to the challenge because I am Naruto Uzumaki. With a final thought of determination Naruto shut his eyes. When his body hit the ground he was already dead to the world. Shit, Azumo cursed loudly watching Naruto fall lifelessly to the ground. Reaching the boy's side he began to check his vitals. He sighed in relief. Thankfully he felt a weak pulse yet looking at Naruto at this moment he didn't have much confidence. The boy wasn't out of the woods yet. Kotetsu. He shouted looking at his best friend run up to them. I need you to go tell Hokage-sama of this. I'm going to get them to the hospital as fast as I can. Many people, shinobi and civilian alike, underestimated the two chunin, but they hadn't been given the ranks just for kicks. Azumo picking Naruto up tried to sling him across his shoulder as gently as possible. He immediately felt blood soak his shoulder and uniform. Kotetsu on the other hand stood frozen as his friend worked. Is that? Pointing at the unconscious body of Sasuke Uchiha the Chunin couldn't process the information fast enough. Naruto had done it? It was unbelievable. He the mere genin really brought the last Uchiha back to Konoha? Yes it's the Uchiha brat. Azumo grinded out through his teeth. Naruto was heavier than he thought. Does it need to be any clearer to you? Both of them need medical attention now. Or can't you see that? Get the hell going and do as I ask. Azumo snapped out. Kotetsu was his best friend. That was a fact and everyone in the village knew it, but these were lives on the stake. Not so much that he cared about the Uchiha, but this was Naruto. The two Chunin had known the brat since he was a little genin, skipping over the fact that at 16 he still was a genin but he would be damned if something were to happen to the kid on his watch. Finally snapping out of it Kotetsu nodded curtly with a grim face. It seemed he finally grasped the situation in its full severity. He then used the Shunshin no Jutsu to what Azumo hoped would go to the Hokage Tower. Time was of the essence. With Naruto already on his shoulders he grabbed onto the Uchiha as roughly as he could. Azumo had no respect for the raven whatsoever. In his mind if you abandoned the village you shouldn't even have a home to return to. Yet somehow he knew that wouldn't apply to Sasuke. Focusing on the task at hand he couldn't possibly carry them both so he would have to drag the Uchiha and hold on to the blonde. Azuma knew there was no way to get to the hospital fast enough by himself with both of them still breathing. It was amazing they got this far still breathing. He would have to hope once he got inside the gates another ninja would see him and help out. Not wasting any time he began his trek. Tugging the Uchiha along he knew there were to be stairs when he entered the village. This was going to cause uproar. He had a bad feeling that this wouldn't play out so hot with the council either. Still he could not help but smile though. Glancing at the mop of messy blonde hair on his shoulder he honestly couldn't believe it himself. The hard-headed stubborn kid had done it. He had finally brought the Uchiha back. He would be the first to admit that when the boy first said he would bring the Sharingan wielder back he didn't believe the kid could do it, but the boy really was unpredictable as hell. He remembered when the boy was younger. Fresh out the academy and as green as the grass, 
Naruto would come round the gates shouting he would be the greatest Hokage of all. It seems so long ago now that they were all older. I'm going to surpass all the other Hokages, Azumo said silently to himself. That's what Naruto had told them, had told anyone who would listen and even those who didn't. Azumo hadn't believed him when he first said that either, but maybe though if he had a little faith the kid could actually do it. Azumo laughed at himself. Kami already knew that the young boy was stronger than he was by tenfold. After all maybe having an orange Hokage did have a certain ring to it. Smiling he could see the faces of the other nations already. This kid, this kid is going to do great things. I just know it, so Naruto Uzumaki I believe in you. Naruto woke to the sound of beeping. Loud and constant, the rhythm of the sound slowly forced his crystal blue eyes open. It was then that he was met with streams of bright shining white. Involuntary he groaned guttural and low, his head pounded and he felt dizzy. Trying to recall his last memory he found himself unable to. Worried now that he was unsure of where he was the boy lied still. Fingers twitching where they lay Naruto let his eyes roam. A ninja always learned how to assess an area for threats after all. Even Naruto knew that. He inhaled deeply and nearly gagged. Sitting up violently he glared at the walls of his prison. He knew where he was. The stench of sterile medicine and death was always familiar to him. White plastered walls and beeping machines Naruto nodded to himself. Hospital, definitely a hospital. He thought bitterly. What other place that he knew would smell so much of old? Naruto sighed. Memories fuzzy he chose to try and forget everything for a moment. Running his tanned hands through his hair he closed his eyes unhappily. He never did have a good experience with hospitals as a kid. To many pointy needles and unnecessary mean bastards terrified of the Kayubi, Naruto had decided early on in his life that hospitals weren't to be trusted. To make it worse though they didn't even have any taste of color. Always white this and white that. He smiled mischievously in his bed. If they had it his way the whole place would be painted orange. Then again if he had it his way the whole village would be orange. But really who doesn't love the color orange? Naruto mused quietly. Finally getting focused Naruto began to quickly check himself over. He noticed that he was covered literally from head to toe in bandages. Moving his arms and legs in small slow movements he found that his body was sore. More sore than it had probably ever been. Most noticeable though to his eyes was the large red stain on the right side of his shoulder. It seemed as if the injury had bled right through all the bandages. I probably shouldn't be moving huh? Naruto asked himself. Then again Kayubi will begin to heal me sooner or later. The genin was surprised that no nurses had entered his room yet. In the past the horrible thing about hospitals were that the nurses always seemed to know when Naruto got up. Laughing he realized that they always ended up thwarting any of his plans in leaving the hospital. It didn't matter though. He had never been one to care about a single misstep. Eventually Naruto always got his way and more importantly he always got away. Finally recalling the event before he had passed out he realized exactly why he was here. Sasuke. Vaguely he was curious as to where the nurses had placed the other boy. A part of him had seemed to think that they would be placed in the same room. They were to stick together through thick and thin. That's what teammates were supposed to do for each other. Shaking his head he realized that was foolish. He figured in the end they were placed in two separate rooms for their safety. After all he and Sasuke did tend to get testy with each other. Grimacing Naruto realized even the last time they were in a hospital they ended up fighting each other on the roof. Remembering how that battle ended and what transpired only a day after that Naruto could only think on how that it wasn't one of his greatest memories. Deciding that he didn't have to think about the past right now he slowly got up. He groaned as his body vehemently protested. Still Naruto disregarded it. Spotting his favorite orange and black jumpsuit in the corner of the room he smiled deviously. If the nurses don't want to come in for an early checkup then I guess there's no harm in an early leave right? Grinning like a fox he slowly made his way over to his jumpsuit. Hand over his chest the wrap wound constricted painfully. Reaching his jacket slowly he attempted to get changed only to find the clothing torn to shreds. Disappointed he muttered an apology to his old jacket before discarding it. Checking over his other clothes Naruto was happy to find that someone had washed them. Shrugging into his black shirt that he usually wore underneath his jacket he was glad it no longer smelled of blood. 
His orange pants were next and they clung loosely to his frame as well. Grabbing the last item he picked up his headband. In the clear steel his blue eyes stared back at him and he traced the symbol of Konoha with his finger. Smiling gently placed the item on his forehead before tightly wrapped the cloth. It wasn't until he was creeping out the window that his stomach growled loudly. Well that settles it, Naruto looked out to Konoha eyes set ahead to where he knew his destination would be, Ichiraku ramen here I come. He declared determinedly, his feet already moving Naruto ran to his favorite restaurant. Taking to the rooftops the blonde tried to travel but fell in exhaustion. Sweat beaded down his forehead and he coughed violently. His hand clutched his chest. Damn it, Naruto cursed. What's taking so long you dumb fox? Naruto breathed slowly trying to control his pain. Grabbing a soldier pill from his pocket he popped it into his mouth and chewed. He didn't like to have to resort to using things like these to dull the pain, but Naruto was sick of feeling weak. He tried to reason a little bit as he swallowed the vile pill. Figuring that after Naruto had gone into his three-tailed Kyubi mode and used Sage Chakra while Sasuke had gone to level 2 Curse Seal mode he had worn the Kyubi out. It was only fair that he gave the fox a little more time to fix him up. Nonetheless it was nerve-wracking not having Kyubi heal him the minute he was hurt. Maybe he had become a little too dependent on the fox. I'll just start training even harder when I'm healed. I won't rely on the fox. He resigned that he couldn't do anything now so he continued forward. Dropping to the ground he walked into the crowds of civilians. He could take the long way to Ichiraku. It didn't really matter to him so long as he got there. Walking at a steady and slower pace than normal Naruto put his hands atop his head. It came to mind as he was strolling he didn't know how long he had been out. It couldn't have been long maybe a day or so. Yet even as he was thinking Naruto couldn't help but notice the nasty glares some of the civilians were sending his way. Well that's odd, Naruto had gotten a few occasional mutters but nowadays he barely had gotten any especially after the pain attack. He thought he had gained the people's respect and their trust. Frowning Naruto began feeling a little more self-conscious than before. Lowering his hands he tried to play it off as just one of those days. His hands found their way deep into his pockets, he knew he shouldn't let things like this get to him. He opted to try and ignore it like he used to. Break? Ichiraku finally inside Naruto glimpsed the familiar sight neon pink hair he knew only belonged to one person. Despite the odd actions of the villagers he couldn't help but feel a smile tug at his face. He was always happy when he was around Sakura. It was just a fact. It didn't help that he wanted couldn't wait to tell her about Sasuke. She probably already even knew, but then again he would probably tell her again anyway. It was Sakura he just couldn't help, but get nervous. Maybe I could even get her to go on that date with me now. He was always hopeful that one day she would say yes. He knew it had been a long time since they were a genin team together, yet still his love and care for Sakura had stayed. He wanted her to be happy and more than anything he wanted to be the one to make her happy. And after all this time and failing to keep the promise of bringing back Sasuke he hadn't felt worthy to ask her, but now things were different. Sasuke was back and he had kept his promise. Naruto finally felt as if he had some worth. His mouth started moving before he even realized it, hey Sakura-chan. She hadn't heard him, he walked towards her, his pace increased, he smiled brighter, he called out again. Sakura-chan, he could always ask her to eat Ichiraku with him. That was a good idea. He thought it didn't even have to be a date. Being around Sakura was better than not being by her at all. One more time he called out to her, Sakura-chan. Much closer to her he finally saw that she had heard him. He watched the pink-haired girl turn to look for the speaker. He noticed that next to her Ino Yamanaka and that girl Tenten from Bushy Brow's team were there too. He smiled. He would ask them to. The more the merrier had always been Naruto's motto. Emerald green eyes finally settled onto Naruto as he stopped directly in front of her. Oblivious to anything but his own plans the blonde never noticed how Sakura's eyes had narrowed, never noticed the tense positions of Ino and Tenten watching their friend. Sakura-chan long time no see huh? Naruto chirped happily. His thoughts run amok with asking the girl of his dreams to Ichiraku with him and talking about their once wayward teammate. He had built up the courage and he was determined to ask her. He was going to ask her. So caught up in his own musings he never realized Sakura had never responded to him. Still the girl had opted to just glare at the dazed blonde. 
Sakura-san? Tenten started quietly. Still no response. Ino next to her shifted uncomfortably. Staring at Naruto the blonde girl pleaded silently. It wasn't his fault, but it really wasn't a good time right now. Please don't let that blonde knucklehead say anything to set her off. For once Ino didn't want to partake in any sort of drama that she felt was about to brew. Nay Sakura-chan? Naruto started hesitantly. While the boy was confident he wanted to ask, he still couldn't help but feel nervous. I was wondering ya know that maybe you wanted to go get something to eat with me? He shifted from foot to foot looking abashed. He never saw how Sakura tensed at his words. Fist shaking and eyes flashing his old teammate stood completely still. I just got back ya know and maybe you already knew but. His confidence growing he looked up hoping to see some reaction from his crush. His blue eyes shone with both a soulful pride and a vast nervousness. I finally brought Sasuke back and we sue. He never finished the sentence as Sakura's fist was now being acquainted with his face. Sailing through the air flew into a nearby wall of the market area. When he landed the wall was destroyed leaving only a crater with a body inside. Everyone passing by had stopped to watch this new development. Sakura what the hell? Naruto could hear Ino's voice from his spot in the wall. Naruto-san, he even heard the Tenten girl yell his name. Was there a hint of worry there? Naruto didn't really know, nor did he even think he cared. All he felt was pain. He looked up to see Sakura trembling. He hadn't meant to make her angry. Did he say something wrong? His left hand clutched his shoulder and for once he was grateful he was wearing black. The material of the shirt was soaked through with what he knew to be blood. Any other color and the red stain would have shown clear through. Even with the bandages tightly wrapped underneath the wound bled on, the fox still wasn't healing him. Trying to hide the small amount of hurt in his eyes he looked up at Sakura sheepishly. Using his free hand he lifted himself off the ground. He found that when he stood he had to lean against the wall for support. He could barely stand with his own two feet. Naruto laughed, humorlessly and hurt, but the boy laughed as if nothing had happened. Trying to smile he attempted to suggest something else for them to do. Okay I guess no eating then huh? Naruto joked. Tenten still over in the crowds looked pleadingly over at the boy. Naruto please stop. Ino who was next to Sakura was trying to calm the fuming girl down while Tenten was unsure of how to continue with the situation. Weren't they supposed to be teammates? Well then maybe we could just go see the Teme? It would be like a Team 7 reunion. Naruto exclaimed half-heartedly. We could even get Kakashi Sensei to come ya know? Trying his best to ignore the pain Naruto gently pushed himself off the wall to walk towards Sakura. Stop. Sakura's high-pitched voice rang clear through the next to silent area. Don't you get anywhere near me you demon. She continued screeching. Naruto froze cold. Blue's eyes wide in shock and hurt. He felt a pain much more intense than anything he had ever felt. This time it wasn't the flesh wound Sasuke had parted on him either. She hadn't meant it. He knew she didn't mean it. She couldn't have meant it. Not Sakura. The crowd around taking a much larger interest in them than before closed in on the scene. Forming a prison in the shape of a ring it was as if a wall surrounded the young group. Ino and Tenten looked on more confused than ever though. Yet they both knew this was escalating into something far more serious than it ever should have gotten. When I asked you to bring Sasuke back I didn't mean for you to bring him back half dead. Shouting Sakura pushed Ino off her. I didn't mean to Saku, Naruto tried to say. I bet that was your whole plan. To kill my Sasuke-kun, right demon? You were always jealous of him. Always. You couldn't stand that he was better than you. The crowd roared in approval becoming more menacing by the second. He hurt the Uchiha kid, they whispered. Tried to kill him that monster did, they shouted. He should rot in hell. Poor Sasuke would have never hurt a fly. And now they roared. The voices amassing into waves of anger and hate. Sakura stop it. Leave him alone will you? Ino yelled at her longtime friend. Yet her voice was lost under the rage of so many. No. Naruto pleaded. I didn't mean to. Temei tried to kill me I swear. I had to don't you understand? He couldn't kill Sasuke. Not ever. And even still he hadn't hurt Sasuke half as bad as his friend had done to him. Didn't they see that? Liar. She screamed approaching Naruto. You wanted him dead admit it. I bet you cheated because there is no way Sasuke would lose to the likes of you. Naruto felt something breaking inside of him. She didn't mean it he told himself. She was just a little angry. 
he would have to just give her some space. He could do that. Then they could sort this whole mess out together. Sakura-chan please? Naruto begged, stopping in front of the poor boy she cocked her fist back and let it fly. Once again Naruto went flying through walls crashing to the ground. Don't you dare ever call me that demon. And never come near me again. I want you out of my life do you hear me? Sakura yelled. Naruto didn't answer. Still on the ground this time he lay unmoving. Sakura watching with triumph smirked while Ino and Tenten looked on horrified. What had she done? Leaving, she first walked by Naruto to spit at his unmoving form before the crowd let her exit from where she came from. Her friends left completely forgotten. Around the remaining teenagers the crowd began to get more unruly than they already were. Chanting over and over they cursed Naruto screaming profanities that didn't befit the still blonde boy. Noticing that they were closing in on him Tenten and Ino finally took action brandishing their kanai. Attacking a shinobi of the village means death or severe punishments to any violator. Ino yelled out. The crowd wasn't deterred in the least. And under the shinobi handbook any fellow comrade being attacked may be defended by any means seen fit. So if any of you assholes come near us don't think we won't fight back. Tenten sneered viciously. Ino continuing with what Tenten started said. I don't think a couple of civilians would match up against two chunin at all. It'd be some easy pickings right there. She let the statement hang glaring hatefully at all those near them. It was here that the crowd seemed to finally stop and think to the two girls' relief. It wouldn't have been any good trying to get the boy with the ninja protecting him. The crowd figured that not only would they undoubtedly face punishment, but they were also severely outclassed. Cutting their losses many people began to disperse with angry mutters not wishing for a bigger fiasco that would not end pleasantly for them. It was only the more stubborn ones that decided to stay and throw rocks and rotten food at them. Yet a few kanai and fake explosives soon cleared that up as well and eventually everyone dispersed. The villagers simply cut their losses waiting for another chance to get the demon boy later when he was without protection. It would so much easier then. Yet it was an older man of the village definitely having lived through the Kayubi attack that left with some parting words. We know you two young shinobi don't know of that thing's condition, but if you did you sure as hell wouldn't be protecting a monster like that. Sharing a look of confusion Ino and Tenten still stood their ground until they were sure no one was left in the area but them. Thinking about the man's parting words though they knew Naruto to be a little irritable and annoying sometimes, but how could they hold it against him like this? It was Naruto. It was just who the boy was. The two girls silently decided together that they would take this up with the Hokage later. She obviously would know something and she needed to hear about what had transpired today as well. There were so many questions and too little answers. Pocketing their weapons they turned to Naruto with sympathetic and apologetic eyes. He had sat there unmoving the whole entire time. When he finally looked up the girls were unnerved. They found only dead eyes staring back. Nothing like how they usually were so full of life and joy and hope. They had always admired that about the boy who never lost hope. Tenten walked over and held out her hand to Naruto. Are you okay? She asked gently. Naruto didn't take her hand opting again to use the wall near him for support and standing. Ino on the other hand stood worriedly watching on at the blonde boy she used to know in the academy. It was so odd seeing him silent. It was even odder not seeing him smile. She froze when she saw Naruto fall into a fit of bloody coughs. He fell from the overexertion back to the ground none too pleasant. When his fit finally stopped his face was considerably paler than before and drops of blood scattered the ground and the edges of his lips. Tenten again almost forced herself onto him trying to help, but he still disregarded it. When he was finally standing again she noticed that his hands were literally almost dripping with the sticky red substance. Blood? His coughing fit hadn't exactly been pretty, but that was an ungodly amount to come from there. It was just too much her mind thought. She tried to remember then where the blood had come from then. It hit her like a ton of bricks after that. Naruto had just come back with Sasuke and had been in the hospital for six days under serious condition and watch. She'd been told he had flatlined at least four times. They hadn't been sure if he was going to make it through. All of that and Sakura had just punched him through a wall. Twice, the medic side of her had seen Naruto immediately grasp his right shoulder. She felt her blood run cold. Shit, please don't tell me we reopened something. Ino moved towards Naruto with only a grace that she possessed. 
Before Naruto could even respond she placed her hands on his shoulder feeling for anything that might be an indication of a wound. Almost as soon as she touched the fabric her hand became sticky and wet. Pulling it back his blood stuck to her fingers like sap. She tried not to recoil at the smell. Holy shit Naruto we need to get you to the hospital. Ino moved frantically trying to pull Naruto towards the correct path. Her voice carried to Tenten telling her she needed help. The slap resonated through the area. Ino's hands were no longer on the boy and Naruto's hair covered his eyes making them completely unreadable. Don't touch me. Ino and Tenten flinched at the tone of his voice. It wasn't even angry it was just so sad. It was as if he had already resigned himself. Naruto please. Maybe if they reasoned with him they could get him to come thought Tenten. Just leave me the hell alone. Naruto slowly with one hand against the wall supporting himself began to walk away down the street. Damn it you knucklehead. You need medical attention, you need a hospital. Don't you get that we're trying to help you? Ino yelled at his retreating figure unsure what to do. She didn't think he would try to fight them about this. Stopping Naruto looked back so he could answer. You have never wanted to help me before so don't you dare start acting as if you give a damn now. He stated icily. It was a tone they had never heard from the blonde before and they had the decency to look away. It wasn't as if he wasn't right. They hadn't cared for his well-being before. He had always been that loudmouth that had just gotten lucky. It had been just recently after the pain invasion that they had figured maybe they had been wrong. Continuing walking his figure disappeared around the corner. Tenton looked over at Eno. You can't really think we can just let him walk away like that do you? We need to get him somewhere for treatment right now. She said worriedly. You don't think I know that? Eno replied more sternly than she wanted to. Softening her tone she continued. The way he is at this moment I think we would have to fight him the whole way to the hospital. It would cause too much of a scene and that wouldn't look so good to the village ya know? She finished kind of lamely. Tenton while looking a little wary of her statement nodded her head slowly to its truth. Then we at least need to inform Shizun Sama about this. She can at least be more of help to him than we can. The bun haired girl said solemnly. Nodding her head in agreement the pair headed off to the hospital to look for help. Silently each of them promised to get to the bottom of this mess. Someone was hiding something, yet even more so they promised themselves that they would be better friends to Naruto. He deserved at least that much from people who were supposed to be his friends. Naruto brought his bloody hands together in familiar sign. Henge no jutsu. The boy hissed quietly. Instantly his appearance changed. Gone was his blonde hair replaced with a deep dark shade of brown. Instead his jumpsuit clothing the brown-haired man now wore a long-sleeve green shirt with matching blue shinobi pants and sandals. Naruto's whisker birthmarks faded from his face and he wore the Konoha headband much like Lee and Guy did. The piece of cloth was secured firmly around his waist similar to a belt. The only thing that stayed the same was his electrifying blue eyes. The newly formed Naruto walked out of the alley he had been hiding in. Looking like a normal chunin ninja he knew he wouldn't be caught by any civilians wanting to have a play date with the actual Naruto. It only made it that much better that even ninja couldn't detect that he was in henge. It had been a year or so back when he had discovered that his henge jutsu was a real transformation. Jiraiya had told him he had believed it had something to do with the Kyubi inside of him. It had just been a hunch, but it was the closest thing to an explanation they had. Naruto hadn't really cared though. The only thing that mattered was how super cool it was that no one would know if he was under henge or not. Even in the henge Naruto still felt pain. The bleeding in his shoulder had at least stopped when he had ripped some old cloth and tightened it around the wound, but the slight numbing feeling around the area hadn't left. When Naruto had looked at the injury it seemed to be healing albeit a bit slow. For that he was grateful. It seemed as if the fox was getting back to work already. Worse even still Naruto felt a pain in his chest that he couldn't see. He also knew it wouldn't be so easily healed either. To some extent his mind had told him it all went back to Sakura. The words she had said to him cut him worse than any knife they could have stabbed in him. The pain seared through his heart like a wildfire. He wanted this pain to go away if even by just a little. He only knew one way to do it. Jiraiya had shown it to him on the trip. It was only amount of time before it happened but inevitably his crazy sensei had taken him to a bar. Everyone has got to have a vice kid. We're ninja. It's only natural. 
That had been the only serious thing Jiraiya had said that night before going to get drunk off his ass. Not Naruto though. He had tried, but he found he could only get a little buzzed if he drank enough. Unfortunately he would never be drunk. Kayubi filtered out all the alcohol before it even had a chance to settle into his system. Naruto had been a little disappointed, but the boy decided it wasn't too bad. After trying the stuff his sensei put in front of him he wasn't going to be a heavy drinker anyway. He could live with just the slight buzz that would befall him instead. Naruto's walked through the streets of his village. His feet dragged and he couldn't bring himself to try and act happy. When he finally arrived at his destination he stopped out front and stared. It was the old barbecue place he used to come around with his team. It had a bar and it was mostly ninja oriented so it would serve his purposes. Going inside the blonde found a way to the bar and took a seat. The bartender there gave him a funny look, but Naruto paid him no mind. Get me a bottle of your strongest stuff. His voice quiet and reserved it seemed as if it was barely over a whisper. The bartender scoffed, sorry kid you're a few years short of drinking anything other than water. The man turned to leave already on the lookout for another client. Before he had the chance to Naruto placed his headband on the table and spoke again. Old enough to kill, old enough to drink. Jiraiya had told Naruto that one when the boy had questioned him about his age as well. The bartender stared hard at Naruto the lines in his forehead becoming much more visible. Finally sighing he gave a quick nod to the boy in resignation. Naruto gave a small smile in gratitude knowing he had gotten what he wanted. The man disappeared into the back with what Naruto figured was him getting his drink. Having time he glanced around the small restaurant. Usually when they did work up the nerve to come in some shinobi would go and freak them out till they ditched. Hey stupid civilians, Naruto said a little bitterly. After what happened today Naruto didn't know what to think about the villagers. Hadn't he earned their respect? He had saved them. He had saved all of them in the pain invasion. They had cheered for him. He'd heard them. He'd felt their praise. Were people so easily turned? Was it all a lie? If it was a lie, he began to wonder. Then what the hell is the truth? To that question he thought he heard something in the back of his mind. Kayubi? He reached out mentally. He couldn't investigate it though as a sharp bark of laughter drew his attention to another part of the room. Sitting down at a dark table in the corner Naruto saw a group of people he was vaguely familiar with. With gravity-defying hair Naruto spotted his own sensei Kakashi Hitaki at the table. With him he assumed they were the other team's teachers based on descriptions he had heard in the past by their students. The raven-haired lady with bandages for a dress he believed went by Kurenai. Kiba had always mentioned how she was smoking fucking hot. Naruto realized that his friend always seemed to be horny when it came to girls. Next to her was the only other female at the table. A smile tugged its way onto his face as he recognized her from a faint memory. Anko he heard them calling her yet to him she would always be the crazy snake lady from the Chunin exams. When he was a kid she had scared the shit out of him. Alongside Kakashi were two other males he had seen frequently in his younger days. Asuma Serutobi to his right was son to the deceased third Hokage. He had met him many times when he played in the Hokage office as a child. To his left was a man that made Naruto shudder. With bigger eyebrows than Lee and a green jumpsuit that was way tighter than it should have been was Guy. Eccentric, loud, and a taijutsu specialist he was strong, but the man was a little too weird even for Naruto. Listening Naruto found he could easily make out what they were saying they were so loud. He blamed it on the fact that many of the men there looked more than a little tipsy. Turning away from the group he pushed a little chakra to his ears. Smiling he figured it didn't hurt to see what they were saying. Blackmail was an opportunity that Naruto never passed over. Plans of pranking already took form in his mind. He found himself feeling better than he did when he came into the bar. Maybe I can save the day yet, Naruto thought hopefully. His shoulder was feeling immensely better and Naruto was ready for that drink. Listening he heard the group of mentors behind him start to speak about a very interesting topic. Have you heard Kakashi? Your kid Naruto finally brought the Uchiha back. Asuma spoke first a slight slur detected throughout his speech. Kurenai on the other side of the table looked amazed. The loud jumpsuit wearing kid had actually done it? That was a surprise. Kakashi downing a shot glass of sake slammed the cup back down to the table. Not you to Asuma, he said exasperated, 
Gan was the usual quiet and reserved man replaced by a loud and obnoxious voice that was no doubt from alcohol. I just can't get away from this shit. He started again. No matter where I go I hear the same thing. Honestly I don't believe it. Ain't a chance in hell Naruto beat Sasuke. It's just a fact. If Naruto was hurt by the statement at all he didn't show it. He instead opted to nod dumbly at the bartender who had finally brought him his bottle. Back at the table Anko looked slightly annoyed at Kakashi. No matter what you believe the Brad did it. You can't deny him the results. The Uchiha is in the hospital right now and is set to be clear tomorrow. Kakashi barked out in laughter. As kids Naruto could never beat Sasuke. He was just too good for Naruto. Nothing has changed about that. Picking up another shot glass he placed it by his lips. Even worse Naruto hasn't changed at all since he was a kid. Still the same annoying brat he was then as he is now. The man downed the glass without a second thought. Naruto stared hard at the bottle in front of him. The look of hurt and betrayal finally began to dawn in his blue eyes. Sakura came back to the forefront of his mind along with Kakashi. Did no one give a damn about him? Hey Ash. Anko tried getting a word or two in but Kakashi cut her off. It wasn't right she thought and it wasn't fair to the blonde Gaki either. Sure he wasn't the brightest tool in the shed, but he got the job done and he had done a damn good too if what she heard was correct. Who the hell was Kakashi to condemn his own student? Asuma, what I wouldn't do to trade someone like Shikamaru for Naruto. Your boy is a genius while Naruto was always slow to catch on to anything we said. Still is pretty slow actually. It doesn't help that he doesn't have any talent as a ninja. Talentless? Naruto muttered to himself. Well who the hell's fault is that? Damn it, he put his head into his hands. Someone, anyone had to think him better than this. First it was Sakura and now his own sensei? What the hell did everyone else think of him? The boy couldn't even make himself stop listening. It hurt him to hear, but it would hurt even worse if he didn't finish this out. He needed to know everything. Even if it killed him on the inside. Asuma's laughter boomed throughout the whole room filling it entirely. Sorry Kakashi I've seen your student. He doesn't have anything on my kids he said smiling. In fact I don't think he has anything on any of the kids in our age group. I don't even know how he became a ninja. Kakashi joined him in laughter after that. Kuranai didn't say a word the whole time. Sipping her glass of alcohol words of insult burned in her throat to be said. She didn't agree with so blatantly putting down your own student. If anyone had slandered Hinata or her other students like this she would have had them by the throats. Unable to contain her irritation she voiced her question. Kakashi don't you think you should have a little more faith in your student? If you knew him like I do then you wouldn't be asking that. Kakashi's eye smile conveyed all of his mirth. Naruto got up from his seat. He'd had enough. Naruto walked quickly over to the exit. The drink on his table lying completely forgotten. The bartender looked curiously at him before calling out to the boy. Hey kid aren't you gonna drink this? There seemed to be an underlay of annoyance in the man's voice. Hand at the knob of the door to leave Naruto felt guilty. He had antagonized the man to getting him the drink and then he ups and leaves before he even opens the bottle. He would have been a little pissed too. Walking back to the counter he dug in his pocket for some cash. Taking out more than enough he laid it all on the table before looking at the bartender. Sorry, he muttered quietly. Here's the money though, and if you could go and just give the bottle to them, it'll be on me. Keep the extra. He finished nodding over to Kakashi's table. He forced a weary and tired smile on his face. He couldn't seem to think straight anymore. The bartender nodded before pocketing all the money and taking the unopened bottle. Naruto stayed still for a moment. Unsure of what to do now he slowly made his way back over to the door to leave. Here, going to the table the young boy had pointed to he placed the bottle down roughly on the table. The occupants looked up at him. Guy looked mildly surprised while Asuma looked on in glee at the bottle as did Kakashi. I'm sorry we didn't order this. Kuranai said apologetically not wanting to pay for anything extra. Kakashi shot her a glare. To him this was essentially free sake. Why in Kami's name would you question it? I know you didn't, someone got it for you. None of the male shinobi at the table noticed when the man's eyes had flickered immediately to the young man leaving the bar, but Kuranai and Anko had. What a youthful surprise. This is most wonderful. Guy exclaimed watching Asuma pour the free alcohol into shot glasses. Picking the new glass Asuma lightly sipped it. Now this is the good stuff. 
he said looking at Guy and Kakashi happily. His response was a thumbs up and an eye smile. Kuranai still looking at the where the stranger had left finally began to stand up. Excuse me for Ju, she had started before Anko cut her off. I'll be right back. Standing the woman made her way over to the door before stopping to look back. Don't drink all the sake without me otherwise there might be some unforeseen consequences. She chirped happily. The hissing of snakes was heard as the men realized what this meant. Asuma and Kakashi cringed at her statement while Guy seemed to mutter something that sounded closely related to, unyouthful. Before Kurinai had the chance to even try and stop what she knew Anko was going to do the woman had already used her shunshin no jutsu. Sighing she sat back down next to Asuma. Taking a small glass of the alcohol herself she just hoped Anko wouldn't do anything too bad to the poor boy. After all, she thought sipping her glass slowly. He did just buy us some damn good sake. Naruto had just walked outside of the small bar. Still in hench he decided maybe it was better just to walk aimlessly for a while to clear his thoughts because it felt as if his head was going to explode. I'm such a god damn idiot. He muttered to himself. To think he thought that they actually cared for him. It hurt him more than he would ever admit aloud though. It felt as if he was suffocating on the air itself. He had finally started to feel like he belonged for once only for it to get thrown all in his face. It couldn't be true though. Someone had to be messing with him. He couldn't have gone through so much, thrown his life on the line, and worked his ass off for everything he knew to have been wrong. To have been a giant lie. Again in the back of his mind he heard a dark whispering as if someone was speaking. Yet again he was unable to investigate it as he walked head first into the ample assets of one Anko Mitarashi. Well, don't you have a pair of brass balls Gaki? Anko said with a shit-eating grin. Usually I don't let it get this far until the second date. She finished winking. Looking up he instantly recognized who he had just ran into. Narrowing his eyes he wondered if the bartender had just put a sign on him saying, I gave you the damn bottle come and get me bitches. His angered blue eyes threw daggers at Anko yet the only thing Anko seemed to think was how familiar the boy felt to her. She definitely had never met this kid before in her life, but his blue eyes seemed to ring bells in her head. Go to hell, Naruto spat. Ah don't be like that kid. I just wanted to tell you it wasn't very nice to eavesdrop on the adult's conversation when we're talking. Naruto stiffened at the comment. So he was eavesdropping, she thought curiously instantly reading his body language. Now what the hell is this kid doing listening to a bunch of Jonin? And I just wanted to tell you to go to hell. The venom dripped in his words. Shouldering past the woman he tried to attempt to walk away. Why couldn't she just leave him alone? Hey now Gaki I just thought it'd be nice for us to have a little talk now. She purred. And maybe if you're lucky we can do a little more than talking. She didn't want him to leave quite yet. Not only did she want an explanation to the boy, but she wanted to figure out why the boy looked so familiar to her. Anko prided herself in not forgetting faces, most of the time that is. Either way the boy wasn't just going to leave. And Anko knew if you wanted to get a guy to stay all you had to do was entice them a little. No man ever refused Anko. Anko placed a firm hand on his shoulder not meaning to let him go. Naruto hadn't meant to retaliate when she had touched him, but he had just been so angry. He hadn't expected her to try and stop him. She was supposed to go back to the bar and drink with all the others. When he felt his body begin to spin he quickly took hold of Anko's arm and held firmly. Bending his knees slightly he used the momentum of his spin to sweep one of his legs out catching Anko off guard. Her legs buckled in an instant as she began to fall. Shocked Anko tried to catch her balance before she fell, but Naruto's hard grip on her arm forced her down on her ass. The dust from her fall bellowed out in fans around her. She felt a pressure on top of her. Opening her eyes she once again met the crystal blue ones of the gaki. She felt her ire grow. Scratch the balls of brass this kid had balls of steel to embarrass her in front of mere civilians. She was really trying to be nice to. Ker Chan had said if she was nice to other people they wouldn't be assholes to her. A tick mark started to appear on her forehead and Naruto felt the temperature drop 10 degrees around them. She looks really angry, Naruto thought. He swore he had cackling in the back of his mind again. Really, this couldn't day couldn't get any worse could it? Well shit, Naruto cursed before getting up and running like hell through the crowd of civilians. You're so dead asshole. He could hear Anko's declaration and promise of pain as he was running. 
Quickly taking to the rooftops he pushed whatever chakra he had into his feet to go faster. It was still a lot more difficult than he had thought. It looked as if his chakra reserves were still really low. Anko who had gone for the chase immediately saw the blonde Gaki jumping the rooftops. Like hell if that little shit thinks he's getting away. She said before pushing her own chakra to her feet and going off at speeds most Jonan didn't have. The kid was brave and bold. She'd even admit he was pretty fast managing to keep out of her reach, but it still wouldn't be enough. Grinning she took out some kanai. The problem meets solution. For a second she thought maybe it was wrong to throw knives at a young and weak genin. Then she remembered why she was doing this. Game on. Consequences be damned. Naruto only a few feet ahead was breathing hard. Sensing another kanai to his right he dodged just in time. Feeling a sting he realized he'd been grazed again. A little blood seeped from a small cut on his arm. It didn't really matter as there were about a dozen other identical scratches everywhere else too. The snake lady had been tossing kanai at him for the past half an hour. No matter how many turns he took, and no matter how many crowds he dove into she was still on his tail. He had no chakra, his body hurt, he was angry, he was so many things that he didn't really comprehend it, but he was done playing this little game of hers. It wasn't as if he could go on any longer anyway. He just still wasn't strong enough yet from his previous injuries. Naruto against better judgment jumped down to the ground seeing an alley a few feet ahead. Maybe for once I should have just stayed in the hospital like I was supposed to. He thought mirthlessly falling through the shadows of the walls. Watching him go into the nearby alley she followed closely behind not ready to give up on her pursuit. She wondered though why he would go into such a closed off area. He had to know she would have him trapped like a rat. It would have been better if he had just kept running. Landing on the ground gracefully she found the gaki just standing there with his arms crossed. Sweat beaded down his face and his breath was labored, but the kid still looked at Anko as if this was her fault. Her irritation grew. Who the hell did he think he was? Why can't you just leave me the hell alone? Strike number three. Leave him alone? He was the one who had knocked her to the ground. She ignored the fact that she was the one who originally started pestering him. Sorry gaki you got to pay for earlier. Anko spoke nonchalantly, so just so say no jutsu. Twin snakes kill each other, from her sleeves two snakes erupted and shot towards the disguised Naruto. Ramming him into the back of the alley he landed on roughly on the ground. The two snakes slithered across his body. One wrapped around his neck constricting any air passages. The other snake bit into his arm. Naruto groaned out at the intrusion. Maybe if you ask nicely I'll give you the antidote to the poison I just injected into you. Granted she didn't actually inject poison into him. As that would be illegal to do, Anko smiled as she thought the kid was finally getting his ass handed to him. Nobody messed with Anko and lived without the scars to prove it. So it generally surprised her when Naruto started laughing. It was weak and hoarse, but it wasn't filled with amusement or even fear like she might have thought. It sounded sad and angry. Most importantly it sounded lost. God damn it. Naruto croaked. His appearance started to blur as he could no longer sustain the henge jutsu. A henge? Confused Anko waited to see what the kid really looked like. He seemed to have gone to a lot of trouble to keep himself hidden after all. The first thing she saw was bright blonde spiky hair that'd blind you if you stared too long. Whisker marks appeared on each of his cheeks along with bright orange pants that usually went along with his jumpsuit. It was now that Anko realized why the boy had seemed so familiar earlier. Those crystal blue eyes only really belonged to one person in the entire village. This kid was the Kayubi Jinchuriki Uzumaki Naruto. It hit her after that about the whole bar thing, why the kid had been listening, and why he'd left so quickly. He'd heard all the nasty things the other Jonin and even his own sensei had said about him. For a second she couldn't even imagine how the kid felt after hearing all of that. Your teacher and your team were supposed to be your family. You didn't turn your back on your family and somehow Kakashi managed to mess even that up. Hey kid I don't know why. She was cut off when Naruto started to speak. Damn it. He cursed. You just couldn't leave me the hell alone could you? I just wanted to fucking leave. Did you not get that? Naruto asked. Anko had the decency to flinch away. She knew when she was wrong. She felt bad. Boss is going to be pissed at me. Naruto said angrily to himself. Boss? Anko said confused. 
Then all of a sudden the kid that had been sitting in front of her poofed out of existence like he was never there. A caged bunchen? When the hell did he make that? She was surprised to say the least, but more than anything she wanted to apologize to the kid. Not just for her actions, but she felt like he deserved one from the others too. Anko knew how to poke fun and tease, but she also knew when someone has had enough. He had been tired and the boy seemed so lonely. If anyone knew what that felt like it was her. Sighing she figured the kid would probably go hide out for a while. That's what she would have done when she was younger. Knowing she wouldn't find him she made her way back to the bar where her friends were. They were probably wondering where she had gotten off to anyway. She figured at least there she could enjoy some alcohol to make her feel better. She'd see the kid again. He wasn't that hard to miss and it wasn't as if she was going anywhere either. She'd apologize then. She'd make this right. Across town sitting atop of the Hokage mountain sat the real Naruto Uzumaki. Feet dangling over the edge of the mountain he looked over his village. Naruto remembered coming up here as a child. It was peaceful to him and it was his home away from home. He could always come up here and sort out his thoughts. No one would interrupt up him and everything was better here. Maybe it was just the air. Naruto felt the clone he had made right after leaving the bar to spell. It was supposed to go and get food for him. Judging from the lack of food in Naruto feeling the remains of its chakra flowing back into his system he assumed the quest for food had failed. And then there was something else. The memories of the clone came back to him as well. That was new. Memories? He hadn't had known that whatever the clone did the memories would come back to him. Fuck. Naruto yelled. His eyes narrowed in anger and frustration. Kakashi knew. Kakashi had to have known. Something as valuable as that and Kakashi hadn't even told him. Something like this would have furthered his training so much more. You were my sensei damn it. He bellowed even though no one was there to hear. You were supposed to help me. His voice quiet, tears welled in his eyes. Sakura, you're my teammate. We're supposed to work together. We're supposed to be friends. Images of others, the civilians, Asuma, Kurenai, Anko, Neji, Kiba, Shikamaru, his friends, what do you want from me? You're a talentless ninja. You aren't gonna last a minute out there. Such a dobi, Naruto you're so stupid, you're destined to be a failure. Trash, ignore it, he had to ignore it. Ignore the comments, ignore the pain, ignore the looks, and ignore the hurt. He refused to let the tears fall. He wouldn't be that weak anymore. He had promised himself that he would stop crying. I just had to prove myself to them. That's what I had to do. He said encouraging himself. He could win back their affection. After 16 years you still believe you can prove anything to them. You are more of a fool than I took you for Naruto Uzumaki. The Kayubi's voice rumbled clear this time. Unlike before Naruto could understand everything he said. Shut up. You don't have a say in this fox. Naruto raged at the beast. Someone had to take his pain. Someone had to be his outlet. You don't know anything. They're my friends. Naruto wanted to deny it all. He wanted to believe with all his heart that everything was going to be okay. If things weren't okay then Naruto was lost. Who would he be without these people? How could he stand alone again? Such a stupid and naive child your kid. Kayubi narrowed his eyes in his cage. Do friends hit each into walls and call you demon? Do friends mock all the hard work you've ever done? Do friends talk behind your back saying how you're a talentless idiot? Do friends shove Chidori through your chest? What friends are those? Pray tell me fool I'm curious. Mark after mark the beast listed things that happened today. Things that have happened in the past. Things that Naruto had always ignored. Naruto put his hands in his knees. He muttered to himself. Wrong, you're wrong. They're wrong. It's not a lie. My life it's not a lie. It's not a joke. There had to be something to true. There had to be light. Naruto didn't want to be alone again. He couldn't be alone again. He screamed at no one. Loud and ugly he screamed. No one could hear him. It didn't even matter that he screamed. Something had to give. I still have others I cherish. No matter what anyone else says I still have others I must protect. He had vowed not to be weak. He had vowed that no harm would come to those he dubbed precious. He had to hang on to that. He wasn't going to break his vow just yet. Not yet. Stupid child. You will learn one way or another that what I speak is true. You could have had this much easier to bear than it has to be. Kayubi thought solemnly closing his eyes. There was no point in arguing with the blonde at this point. Naruto Uzumaki, an unknown voice spoke out to him. 
Raising his head and looking back he saw one of the Anbo. With a white cat mask and cascading purple hair she looked every bit the professional she was meant to be. Yes, even to Naruto his voice sounded stiff and distant. Hokage-sama requires your presence immediately. The Neko Anbu replied. He forced a smile to his lips. Ba-chan? He whispered out as if testing the word. He had forgotten. Forgotten the one he also considered family. Smiling more naturally he stood to his feet. At least I know I'm wanted there. He said mirthlessly, nodding in acknowledgement to the Anbu she disappeared instantly. Walking to the very edge of the cliff he looked over his village watching a spark of drive and determination burn. Yet in that drive lingered a thriving desperation. He vowed right then and there, so long as there is someone for me to protect, someone for me to cherish, someone for me to be strong for then I will never give up. Not ever. His fists clenched and the wind blew strongly. He had to keep trying. He wouldn't fall now. Pushing Chakra to his feet he left for the Hokage Tower. Realizing this was probably going to be about Sasuke he smiled. He'd finally get a little recognition for his efforts. He'd finally see someone proud of everything he's done up to this point. Walking into the Hokage Tower Shizun greeted him cheerfully and Naruto had honestly smiled back at her. Tsunade-sama is waiting for you, so go ahead on up Naruto. He nodded his head before thanking her and leaving. Without knocking Naruto entered the familiar room in which he knew his Hokage to be waiting. Ba-chan? He called out teasingly. He had to be happy for her. So he would. He smiled knowing she'd be irritated that he called her old again. He expected something would probably be thrown at him like usual. It was okay though. Naruto was ready for something that he already knew would happen. Tsunade sat staring at him eyes stern and hard. Don't call me that. Naruto looked surprised. Well it wasn't violent like he expected, but it was new. His heart immediately called out to him telling him it was going to happen again. He was going to be hurt again. He brushed it off, something was wrong with Tsunade someone he held dearly. He noticed the bottles of sake around her desk. It was odd to Naruto. Shizune was usually better about keeping Tsunade under control than that. Ba-chan you okay? He asked. I suggest you don't call me that again. There will be consequences if you do not follow my orders. Again her voice held a sternness that he had never heard from her before. I am your superior and you will treat me as such. So it will be either Hokage-sama or Tsunade-sama to a genin such as you. Naruto refused to look hurt. Not again. Even when he felt his heart clench he showed no emotion. She had used the rank card. She had never done that before. She knew damn well to that he didn't deserve to be a genin. Hokage-sama, he said curtly. The bite in his voice was evident. I want a full explanation on your personal mission to retrieve and almost kill missing Nin Sasuke Uchiha. She said the words as if she had practiced them in front of a mirror. Trying to find words Naruto spoke, my explanation? He said angrily. My explanation is that I saw a chance to retrieve the Teme who is my friend and a vital asset to this village and you wouldn't let me go. So I took the chances Hokage-sama. He coded the title with venom. And I brought Sasuke back to you. I brought the Sharingan back to Konoha. More like you tried to kill him to meet Jenin Uzumaki. Her voice was calm as if she didn't even know why she was wasting her time. It hurt when she used his last name to address him. They were family. Why? Why did everyone he loves want to hurt him? I did what I had to do to get him to come back. I never once used unnecessary force. If anything Hokage-sama he tried to kill me, Naruto yelled. What was the point of this? Was there a point in anything he wondered? You will watch your tongue or face the consequences do you understand me? Tsunade yelled with equal force back. By this point Shizune had come up to see what all the noise had been about. Instead she was horrified watching a screaming match between the people she cared for. Tsunade-sama, Shizune had begun. Silence Shizune I am Hokage. Tsunade snapped at her. Naruto beyond angry retaliated at her. Funny how you seem to have to remind everyone of that Nesunade sama Turning her attention back to the blonde she glared at the boy. You disobeyed my orders, you used unnecessary force to bring Sasuke Uchiha back to the village and you almost cost us the Sharingan. She continued to list things off. We then have a statement from Sasuke that when he said he would return you went Kayubi on his ass. That's a fucking lie. Naruto roared. Never, never had that come from the raven's mouth. Do not interrupt me Uzumaki. You know the importance of the Sharingan to this village. 
When I named you successor I thought you would grow and learn under me to become a great Hokage. She had gotten a distant look in her. Some of the anger had left her. Naruto didn't like the direction this was going. But I am beginning to think otherwise. With the damage seen for Sasuke Uchiha and your constant reckless actions the council and I are persuaded to believe you are nowhere fit to be Hokage of this village. We will end all training of such immediately. No. Naruto felt something shatter inside of him. Into a million pieces you would never be able to repair this break. It just wasn't possible. Nothing about this would ever get better. Everything was gone. The council also believes which I am becoming inclined to as well how much you are being influenced by the fox. We will not have people such as you running around this village. People such as me? What am I? Make it stop. Just make it stop. Tsunade Sama. This is going way too far. He heard Shizun call out. He saw Tsunade then flinch away as if she had been slapped by the words. He thought he saw the sternness that he had never seen in her eyes finally leave. He looked on in a daze. It seemed as if she was trying to come to terms with what she said. Was she wrong? Am I wrong? Is anyone ever even right? Pain. That's what was right. Being angry. That's what was right. Everything else was wrong. Everything else was wrong because everything else was a lie. The truth was that he was lie. I'm sorry. The fox inside his mind mumbled quietly. He held no love for his container, but there was some respect for the boy. Not many could go through what he had and come out like he did. He knew better than anyone how the boy felt. How much he hurt. How much this shattered him from the inside out. Tsunade seemed torn at what she had said. Naruto I didn't mean it like that. She was ashamed. Why had she said that? She knew about his hardships about his trials so then why had she said that to the boy she viewed as a son? After all I've done for this village. After everything I've done for you people. You bitch. Naruto said angrier than he had ever been. What did you say? Tsunade asked incredulously. Her eyes narrowed. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Getting up from her chair she walked right in front of the blonde boy so they were eye to eye. I said you're a fucking bitch. Naruto growled out. All the warmth in his eyes had left. All the affection in his voice disappeared replaced by an iciness that shocked her. You little brat. Cocking her fist back she was going to knock the living daylights out of Naruto. Maybe they could figure this out later. It would be better later. Throwing her fist forward she expected to hit him squarely in the face. What she didn't expect though was for him to catch it. His hand wrapped around her fist painfully. Not this time. She stared in shock. Never before had he tried to stop her when she went to hit him. Never in her wildest dreams did she even think Naruto was strong enough to stop her from punching him. Using his free hand Naruto made his own hand. Cocking it backward he took his own swing at Tsunade. It was with a smile that he said, go to fucking hell, as his fist connected with her face. Tsunade went flying back crashing into her desk. Her head hurt and her ears were ringing. Her desk lay in ruins underneath her and she had been lucky she hadn't gone flying out the window. Looking back she realized it would have been a very long fall. Moving her eyes away from what could have been she searched her room only to find Naruto already gone. Shizun lay unconscious next to the door. Picking herself up she stood in the middle of the carnage. Flaring her chakra she called her Anbu. Neiko was the first to arrive. What the hell have I done? She asked miserably. If you're planning to stop him I suggest you do it quickly. A new voice entered the scene and she recognized it instantly. A white haired man in a red and green GI sat atop the window next to her. Jiraiya? Don't make me repeat myself Tsunade, he said very quietly. By then the rest of the Anbu had arrived in the room. With a confidence she did not have she managed to speak. You're to retrieve Genin Uzumaki Naruto and bring him back here as soon as possible. I want no harm done to him understood? With chorus of nods the Anbu disappeared in seconds after their new target. She was alone with Jiraiya now. Silence reigned. What the hell have you done Tsunade? Jiraiya's voice came out as a whisper. Looking over at him she saw he hadn't even moved from his spot on the window. His tired eyes stared at the spot in where she knew Naruto to have stood. How much of it did you see? She was scared to know. She almost didn't want to know. Every fucking second of it. Jiraiya said instantly not having to think about it. He couldn't believe it. He single-handedly watched Tsunade decimate his godson with merely words. Words. It had been so simple. He saw the light leave Naruto's eyes. He had died in that moment. Jiraiya had no doubt about that. And now the blonde was angry. 
Jiraiya didn't blame him. Why? He asked. What do you mean why? Tsunade couldn't look at Jiraiya. The disappointment on his face was meant solely for her. Never in her life had he looked at her like that. Was it for the council? Was it for the village? Was it for the fucking fun of it? Why did you destroy my godson? Honestly I want to know. Jiraiya's voice was rising. He was so angry. So very angry. I don't know, Tsunade answered. Faster than she could even react Jiraiya held her by the shoulders and the look on his face made her regret everything. Don't give me that bullshit Tsunade. Tell me why, he yelled. Finding her backbone again Tsunade answered. I couldn't. Take it okay? I was getting shit from the council. I was getting shit from civilians. Even my own ninja didn't want him. They all said he deserved it. He deserved to be punished. She had started crying at this point. He hurt the fucking Uchiha. She mocked their words as if they were in front of her. He should be banished. He deserved it. All of it. I couldn't take it Jiraiya. I just couldn't take it. She started hiccuping. She hadn't meant it. She hadn't meant to hurt Naruto. She hadn't meant those hurtful and nasty words. She was just so tired. I was so tired Jiraiya. I just wanted it to stop and the only way to do it was to hurt Naruto. And the more they said all those things about him the more I just wanted to believe them to get it done with. That's why. She finished bawling. Jiraiya's face softened. Releasing his grip on his old teammate she slid to the ground crying. Turning away he looked out the window to the village. He had a foreboding feeling. Nothing felt right. If he guessed correctly on what Naruto was probably thinking then he knew the Gaki was leaving. He was leaving and he wasn't coming back. The son to Konoha was leaving. What the hell have you done Haim? Jiraiya said more to himself than anything. He couldn't stay angry at Tsunade. He just couldn't, especially when she was like this and already punishing herself. Disappointed he was and would be for a long time, but never angry. It didn't help that Jiraiya felt as much of a cause as she did. He could have stepped in. He should have stepped in. Instead he had listened to a toad and just watched. Flashback. Pa? Ma? What's going on? Jiraiya asked confused. He had just been reversed summoned to Mount Mayoboku. Pa looked solemn. A prophecy has been made Jiraiya boy. Ma wouldn't look at Jiraiya. The older man looked on curiously. Are you going to tell me what it is? He asked. It has to do with Naruto boy. Jiraiya got serious after that. He was very protective of his godson whether the boy knew he was his godson or not. What is it? He asked hesitantly. From previous prophecies he had determined Naruto as the prophecy child. He was sure of it. Naruto would be the one to change the world. We cannot tell you. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes at that. He was the toad sage rarely was he ever not told anything. And why not? Because we are merely to keep you from interfering with it. Jiraiya did not like that one bit. Not at all. If they had to stop him from messing this new prophecy up then he knew it was something he would not like. The beginning of the prophecy will take place soon. Very soon. So I will accompany you to Konoha. I will make sure you do not interfere. Pa said with no happiness to it. I don't like this Pa. Neither do I Jiraiya boy. End flashback. It had been from there that they had come back to Konoha. They had gone to see Tsunade to inform her of the new development and found the mess had just begun. Jiraiya had been ready to barge in and make hell, but Pa had stopped him. Flashback. It had happened sooner than I expected. The toad said. You're joking right? You can't expect me not to fix this. I can stop it now pa. I can't let this go. I can't let Naruto go. The elderly toad didn't look at Jiraiya. You and Naruto boy have sacrificed much for this village for peace. This is merely one more trial for the both of you. Pa stated. And what if I won't do it huh? What if I don't let Naruto make the sacrifice? Why is it always him? Jiraiya questioned trying to make sense of this. He stared through the window watching the scene between Tsunade and Naruto play out. They were screaming now. Shizune had entered into the fray to he noted sadly. You will make the right choice Jiraiya boy. This is merely the beginning and Naruto has a long road ahead of him. Will he come out of this alive? Will Naruto be able to do this alone? Tell me pa, promise me that he will be okay. I can't do that because I'm not sure. But if he does come out of this alive Jiraiya boy he will not be the same. Pa went home after that. In a poof of smoke he had left Jiraiya to decide the outcome of what was to be. With creases of frustration he sat behind closed windows. One tear rolled down his face. His fit tightened and he felt his nails dig into his skins. 
There were so many sacrifices in his life his sensei, Orochimaru, his student, and now his godson? Could he really do this? I'm sorry Naruto. End flashback. Storm clouds began toppling over the village. When the rain started it was soft and light soon enough though it began pouring. Jiraiya thought maybe Konoha was crying. Even now he wanted to go bring Naruto back. He wished he had stepped in with all his heart. No stupid prophecy was worth it. He hoped beyond hope that Anbu caught him. Yet he knew no matter how skilled the Anbu they wouldn't catch Naruto. Not in a billion years. And no matter how much he might want otherwise, he had no intention of helping them. Naruto ran as fast as he could back to his meager apartment. He only needed a few items and then he would be set. The flow of tears that streamed down his face never stopped though. No matter how many times he furiously swiped them away. Finally reaching his house he flew up the stairs and slammed the door open. The ratty view of his home came into full view. Looks like the villagers already got to my apartment, he thought bitterly. Scribbled across the wall were obscenities and curses over and over. In one place there even seemed to be a hastily and crudely drawn picture of him in flames. How quaint, he said sarcastically. Figuring he didn't have all day before Tsunade would start tailing his ass with Enbu he began looking around for the stuff he needed. Even though the villagers had all but destroyed everything visible within the apartments Naruto had gotten smarter over the years. In little places all over there were hidden compartments of everything he held precious. Making his way into the room he went over to a corner. Kicking at the wood beneath his feet he waited until one of them popped open revealing a hidden stash of items. The frog wallet he had cherished as a child was filled to the brim with cash. It would definitely come in handy in the next few days. Lying next to it were five storage scrolls containing various amounts of weapons he had found over the years. Attaching them to his hips or stuffing them in his pockets he quickly moved on to the next stash. Going next to his closet he grabbed a bag that wasn't as destroyed as some of the others. Next he made his way over to a section of the wall that had been inscribed with colorful language. He pressed down on a hidden square. With a pop a piece of the wall fell off. Ignoring it he found his hidden food stocks. Ration bars were tucked neatly away, but Naruto grabbed them by the handful shoving them into his filthy bag. The next items that had been stored in the very back of the wall pocket he could barely bring himself to touch. Picture frames of him with many different people in Konoha he wasn't sure if he wanted to look at them. He started to question himself again. Could he bring himself to leave so many people? They were his friends right? Didn't you call the pink haired banshee, the old hag, porn reading teacher, and the snake's boy toy your friends? Kayubi asked incredulously. Fuck you, Naruto muttered. Did everything have to be a lie though? Were any of his bonds real? Naruto felt his anger grow. Yet with his anger his sorrow grew in equal parts. He wanted to scream and cry at the same time. He couldn't do that though. He couldn't afford to. At least he couldn't do it yet. Grabbing all of the frames with one hand he threw them all on the bed. He grabbed two of them immediately. One of them was when he was a kid wearing the Hokage hat next to the Sandame Hokage. He still held the old man close to heart. The other one was with Jiraiya. He had been sharing a popsicle with his perverted sensei and it had been one of the best days of his life. He stuffed them both into his bag. He just couldn't get rid of those. Three more pictures he wouldn't take with him. Laying them out in a line on his bed he stared hard for what seemed like an eternity. The very first picture was taken when Team 7 had first been formed. Kakashi was there with his eye smile. Sasuke and himself had been glaring at each other with Sakura smiling between the both of us. He flipped it over laying it face down. We were never a team from the start. Naruto said aloud coming to the realization of this truth. He let the tears come freely down his face this time. He had wanted them so much to be like a family. He had thought of them as a family and that had been one giant lie. The second picture he had the urge to burn and rip like a small child in a temper tantrum. Naruto stood smiling with Tsunade and Jiraiya smirking in the background along with Shizune and Tantan. Looking at one person in particular he felt his heart clench painfully. She had been the final straw. He could take no more after her. He had no words to hold his anger at the person he had taken so close in his heart. Wordlessly he placed the picture face down. The final picture that lay face up hurt him the most. It was a group picture of what many of the villagers had dubbed the Konoha 12. With the sole exception of Sasuke Team 8, T12 
Team 10, Bushy Brow's team, and Team 7 with the addition of Sai and his weird smile had been there. Naruto saw himself there in the middle of everyone with a giant smile on his face. They were all supposedly his friends. He thought they were his friends. Yet whenever I truly needed you none of you were there for me. I was always alone. I just never knew it. He said solemnly. Naruto had always wished and prayed every day that he could be normal like everyone else. He wanted to have friends, have family and live happily, but he couldn't even get that. Forcing his hands atop the picture he laid it face down. It's time for me to move on. Naruto shakily told himself. He wanted to believe in those words too. He wanted to move one, but he knew in his heart he hadn't taken his words to heart yet. His heart was still in the picture with his friends around him and for that he hated himself and everyone he thought he knew. You need to get going, the Kayubi said softly in his head. Naruto finally took notice that ever since the fight with Sasuke Kayubi hadn't been nice, but nicer in a way. At first it had irritated him, but with no one there but Kayubi he took some comfort from the company. I know, he replied. Staring at the three face down pictures one more time Naruto picked up his bag and ran out the door. Naruto felt as though he should have looked back. Given his old shitty apartment one last look, but he couldn't. He felt that if he did he might not be able to leave it behind. Cage Bunchen no Jutsu, Naruto called out under his breath. Noiselessly four clones of Naruto popped up beside him. Looking at each of them he nodded stiffly. You know what to do? He asked. Four nods of affirmation were his response. Each of the clones branched off in a direction. Hopefully that would lead some of the other ninja off his trail for a while. Watching until all of his clones were out of sight he took off. Pushing all his chakra to his feet he made his way to the exit of his old life. Gate finally in sight he figured with all the commotion going it wouldn't be too much trouble getting past it especially if the gate guards were Izumo and Kotetsu. He was almost there when he heard his name called out. Naruto Nissan, Konohamaru called out, Moegi and Udon right behind him. Naruto Nissan please, Konohamaru pleaded. Naruto couldn't bring himself to ignore the boy. He stopped in his tracks and turned around to face him. Naruto wondered just how much they had already heard. Tell me it isn't true. Konohamaru begged. Naruto could see the tears that stung in the corners of the boy's eyes. Moegi and Udon didn't look far from tears either. Naruto looked on at them with indifference. When he left they probably wouldn't ever see them again, there was no reason to leave them thinking anything different. Tell you what? Naruto asked. Konohamaru lashed out at him. Tell me that you're not leaving the village. Tell me it isn't true. Konohamaru started crying, but tried to hide it. Show me that all those idiots were lying when they said the demon was leaving the village. Shutting his eyes tight against some unknown enemy he looked at the ground and tried to wipe away his tears. Boss you're not gonna leave us are you? Moegi began hesitantly. Udon wouldn't even face him. Naruto thought it was because Udon already knew. One look at the blonde and you knew. Konohamaru and Moegi had always been a little stubborn though. Course he's not. Konohamaru had begun to sob. It's Naruto Nissan. He's going to become Hokage. Naruto thought that his little brother was trying to convince himself more than he was trying to convince Moegi. Naruto looked at his three students. Whether or not they knew it after today he loved them. He knew for a fact they would all grow into strong shinobi maybe even stronger than him. Especially Konohamaru. He was going to be a second coming of his grandfather. He would bet on it without a doubt. Naruto only hoped that he would get to live to see it. Those pathetic masked shinobi are gaining on our location kit. You will only last so long against them in your current condition. Kayubi told forebodingly. Naruto nodded and silently thanked the fox for the heads up. It was time for him to go. Kono, Naruto softly chanted. All three of them looked up when he spoke. Goodbye. The three hadn't even noticed that Naruto had created three cage bunchens behind them. They were still genin after all he guessed. With a swift chop to the neck all three of them were out. Catching them before they fell the clone sat them down gently before dispelling. Naruto finished with that once again took off to the gates. He had expected to see Izumo and Kotetsu, but what he got were two unfamiliar chunin sleeping on the job. Naruto took it in stride. It just made things a whole lot much easier. Flying through the gates of his home village Naruto took to the trees. Against his better judgment he spared one glance back on his old home. One glance was all it took for the pain to come rearing its ugly head back. 
The betrayal, the hurt, the pain, but most of all the love he once held for this place. All the emotions burned his heart like fire. If there was one thing he would ever remember it would be how he felt right now. Maybe it was because of all these emotions that Naruto never noticed the man who stood hidden away in the tree leaves. Be safe you stupid little gaki because you have a long path ahead of you. Jiraiya spoke the words hoping that they would somehow guard the boy he viewed as his own grandson. Smiling it hadn't been too hard to figure out where the boy would go after the Hokage Tower. He had tailed Naruto up until the gates where he had put the unsuspecting Chunin guards asleep with a genjutsu. I'll keep them off your trail as long as I can. With those final words he began his walk back into the village. He wondered what he'd tell the Anbu looking for Naruto. Maybe he'd say that he saw him heading towards the hot springs. Seriously who doesn't love the hot springs? Jiraiya grinned lecherously. Some things just wouldn't change. Looking back at the disappearing form of his apprentice he didn't know how long it would be till he saw him again, but he knew he would see him. One day, he would just have to wait a little while. It was there though that he promised to himself and to Naruto that until that day when master and student met again he would get stronger. He would be the man ready to take on the world with Naruto if he ever needed him. Jiraiya would never sit and watch destiny rule his family again. Naruto I believe in you. You're going to take this world by storm. Of all the jobs to get stuck with, Shikamaru sighed as he tried to keep pace with his Hokage Tsunade. Her other chosen escort Anko Mitarashi hadn't made the newly young Jonin's life any easier either. The trio had been hopping through the treetops for what seemed like hours now. Glancing at the older women in front of him he noticed them chatting away as if it wasn't completely freezing. They seemed impervious to almost everything while Shikamaru didn't think things could possibly be worse. Oi lazy ass, are we going too fast for you? The trench coat wearing Jonin cackled with glee. Forcing Chakra to her feet Shikamaru was forced to watch as the woman started to speed away. Tsunade right on her tail didn't even seem to notice the change in speed. He sighed. His Hokage had to like Anko better than him. There was just no other way she could seem so immune to his troubles. Rolling his eyes he figured it was a girl thing. In the end it was always a girl thing. They seemed to enjoy sticking together and hunting men in packs. Frustrated the pine apple haired man groaned. Women are so troublesome. He muttered under his breath thinking no one would hear him. Continuing to hop along the branches he wondered why life seemed to dislike him so much. It was for this reason that he failed to realize one of the branches he put his foot on wasn't made entirely of wood. In place where bark should have been a large coiled snake lay on top waiting. Shikamaru let out a less than manly scream as the snake snapped at him teeth gleaming. The creature hissed in anger and Shikamaru didn't like the glint in its eyes one bit. In attempt to dodge the ferocious reptile trying to bite his balls off the janin missed the next branch. Needless to say the fall to the ground was longer than he imagined. With a loud thump Shikamaru's back met the embrace of the hard earth covered in snow. Opening his eyes the first thing he noticed while laying painfully on the ground were the lack of clouds in the sky. I heard that gaki. Anko yelled back at the fallen boy in a sing-song voice. Even from his spot on the ground he could hear Tsunade-sama scolding Anko for a little prank. He knew silently though that she too was mocking him. Fucking hell, Shikamaru cursed. Were all women going to be the end of him? Seriously what had he ever done to deserve this? Shivering in the snow Shikamaru right then and there decided he hated the land of iron. It was too damn cold for anybody to live in. Even with all the extra layers of clothes he had put on it still felt as if he was being frozen alive. Worse he still couldn't manage the concept of, no clouds, to gaze at. What kind of freaky hell was this? Staring at the cloudless sky he was unwilling to get up. He didn't care if he fell behind the two women. They would come back to retrieve him eventually. And if they didn't, well Shikamaru didn't seem to mind that option too much either. Yet it was then that his ear decided to twitch. He heard something. It sounded almost like a low chuckling. There was something out of place though. The chuckling definitely sounded like a man. The last time he had checked Tsunade-sama and Anko had clearly been women and even that was a topic that delved too far into it would cause him copious amounts of pain. So what was this? Was he so low that the trees laughed at him now? Shikamaru. A voice called out. Okay. Not a tree. Definitely not a tree. Shinobi's senses finally kicking into overtime Shikamaru bounced to his feet in seconds. 
Kanai now in hand he scanned the area for a threat. He'd been caught off guard but he would not be caught unprepared for the situation. For a minute it truly did seem as if no one was there. Then his wary eyes finally caught sight of the object he was looking for. In the treetop staring down at him was a man or at least what he thought was a man. The figure was covered head to toe in a large black cloak. It eerily reminded him of the one Akatsuki always wore except with a large hood. His eyebrows narrowed in frustration as he found even the man's face was covered by a mask. Not a single part of his body was visible. Where's my support when I need it? He thought bitterly. Gripping his kanai at the hilt Shikamaru threw it at him fully expecting the cloaked figure to dodge it. They would test each other. Shikamaru knew this man couldn't do anything drastic. Not if he wanted to attract any attention over to the area. Shikamaru had the advantage or at least he thought. Watching the kanai fly he waited for the man to dodge and the kanai to slide noisily into the tree. His mind was already working in overtime to plan the next 10 moves of the encounter. It was what Shikamaru was good at it. He planned and he won. Everything always worked so long as Shikamaru could think. Everything else was just a pawn waiting to be manipulated. So his eyes widened with surprise when instead he watched the man catch it with one finger. Right through the opening in the hilt he caught the kanai as if it was a play toy. Even after that the man just stood casually allowing the caught kanai to spin freely in circles around his finger. It was as if he could see the man's playful smirk through his mask. It drove Shikamaru insane. He'd had no luck today at all. This just seemed like the icing on the cake. What irritated the janin the most was this meeting seemed like a game to the mysterious man. Shikamaru. The pineapple-haired man was surprised to hear his name come from the mysterious figure. It was as if he was testing it out on his tongue. Did he know him? What do you want? Shikamaru demanded. His cold calculating eyes tried to dissect the man. There was no time to waste. Not a single second. Who is this man? And more importantly why does he seem to know him? He supposed the man knowing his name could be explained through the bingo book. However it had been quite some time since his name had been added into the new edition. He was stuck as the chief analyzer with his father so there was never much time to go into the field anymore. The man he scrutinized was silent. If anything, to Shikamaru the guy seemed confused. Shikamaru wondered what there was to be confused about. If anyone was allowed to be confused it was him damn it. He had attacked Shikamaru, not the other way around. I don't particularly enjoy repeating myself because I find it very troublesome so I'll ask one more time. What do you want? Shikamaru emphasized his question as if he was speaking to a young child. He didn't like not knowing things. When you knew something you could plan accordingly. When you didn't know something you usually died. That was how things worked in the shinobi world. I, the man started slowly, I couldn't pass up the chance to visit an old friend. Shikamaru couldn't help but notice the way he had said the word friend with more than a little detachment. It was as if he didn't particularly care for the word in itself. The hell do you mean by that? Shikamaru asked bewildered though, an old friend, he knew he had some pretty messed up friends, but as far as he was concerned none of them looked like a damn creeper. This mission officially sucked, it was beyond troublesome, why was he even here again anyway? He could have been at home asleep. Oh yeah, he thought bitterly, Asuma sensei practically demanded that I go in his stead. If there was one thing he would do when he got home it would be to make sure Asuma Serutobi paid. Dearly. Anko's voice suddenly called out from behind him. Oi, what the hell Gaki? You were supposed to follow us after you fell. Kami I think he's worse than his father. Seriously even Shikaku wasn't this bad. Tsunade's irritation was audible. Hearing them rustle through the foliage nearby he turned to warn them of the possible enemy. Tsunade saw a possible Thria. His warning died in his throat when he turned to find his attacker had already gone. It was as if he had never been there in the first place. Why? Oh Kami why did it have to be him? He had been there. Shikamaru knew he had been there. For Kami's sake he had even semi-talked to the strange man. Gaki, Anko started. Don't you know it's not nice to take your anger out on trees? What did they ever do to your sorry ass? Anko's grin was clear as day. He knew she had spotted his weapon lodged in the tree above. She had seen the kanai that had previously been held captive by the cloaked man. Let's just get moving. We're going to be late as it is. Tsunade said slowly almost unsure of what she was seeing. Shikamaru didn't miss the incredulous look his Hokage shot him. Great, Shikamaru thought, 
Now my Hokage thinks I'm insane. That was perfect. He hadn't even made it to the cage summit yet and this whole trip had already been dubbed a bust in his opinion. Watching the women leave him behind once again he followed slowly. His mind was a blur with racing thoughts. Next stop was the cage summit. Forgetting about his previous encounter in the woods he focused on the real mission. Whether he liked it or not he was going to have to get serious soon. A cage summit was no place to joke. The topic itself had been called to the forefront by the rakage but it had been something that secretly all the cages had been questioning. It still didn't change the fact that Shikamaru didn't want to go and listen to them bitch about a vigilante. Troublesome as it was Shikamaru did to some degree understand the problem created. This man, they assumed it was a man, both helped and hurt the five great villages. To Shikamaru the guy seemed a little indecisive about his decisions. You either played the bad guy or the good guy, but you couldn't be both. More importantly it wasn't smart to piss off the strongest ninjas in history while you were at it. But hey, if the guy wanted to play hero Shikamaru was more than game to stay out of his way. It wasn't really his problem to fix, yet it seemed as if his village wanted to force it onto him anyway. The cages didn't like this hero and he was about to get hell for it. Shikamaru had left the clearing behind. Discreetly though not wanting to be caught, he glanced back towards the area. A chill ran up his spine. Dark and cold he couldn't help but think they were being watched. He sensed no other presences by them, but he still couldn't shake the feeling. His now mind flew to the man he had met before. Shikamaru was sure he had been real without a doubt. The mysterious figure invaded his mind with questions that he could not answer. He had called Shikamaru an old friend. The words confused him, yet thinking back to his encounter there was something about him. There was something about him that seemed familiar. So then why for the life of him could he not pinpoint where? Sighing he knew there was no point. Following closely behind his Hokage and the reckless Anko his mind was a mess. One thing was clear though. Over anything else he knew for a fact that this meeting between the cages was going to be more than he bargained for. If he was right it was going to be more than any of them had bargained for. Damn this troublesome mission, Shikamaru said softly under his breath. Too many things just weren't adding up. Too many new factors just kept appearing. It almost seemed as they were trying to deal with the problem but were only able to see half of it. They were being set up to fail. Looking to the sky he missed the clouds. They had always calmed his raging nerves in the past. Shivering from the onslaught of snow Shikamaru cursed the samurai for living in such an inhabitable area. He really did hate the cold. On the other side of the forest sat a lone figure. His back leant against the cool bark and he sat high above the ground on a branch. In the distance the towering build of the castle that was the samurai's fortress stood. A rush of memories came back to him. His shadow clone on the east side of the forest had seemingly run out of chakra. The figure frowned beneath his mask. That was not a part of the plan, he thought mirthlessly. His legs swung on either side of the branch. At a distance no one would see the figure. He seemingly disappeared into the background. Covered from head to toe he wore a long black cloak. The cloth ended right at his ankles while the sleeves engulfed his hands in the shadows. A hood was constantly worn preventing any hair from poking out. To finish it off he wore a mask to cover his face. With a rounded muzzle it extended far from his face. Pointed ears garnered the sides of the porcelain item. Finally the slit eye holes were devoured by the shadows making them nothing more than a lost cause. Everything about the man was forgettable. Nothing really stuck out. Nothing was memorable. He simple wanted to fade out of existence. He was there one moment and then he was gone. Yet even the best of criminals could not shy away from having some identity. Some spark that made him unique. Something that made him alive to others and not nearly the myth that they believed. On his otherwise crystal white mask a red messy smile extended far past the corners of its carved lips. It's not a part of the mask. People had whispered, so then how did it get there? There were rumors on how the mask was cursed, or how it was the blood of those he had killed. There had even been talk of how he was simply insane, but the answer was simple. He had just drawn it on. Bright and unforgettable it abolished the thing he had set out to originally do. Becoming unnoticeable became the impossible. He had created an identity. With one simple red line he became terrifyingly real. The man who smiled when nothing was good was the man who brought you to your eternal rest. If you saw the red smile of the devil then you were already dead. 
That's what he heard around town these days. It was quite funny how folk tales work like that. Over and over it reminded him of a mantra almost. A voice began speaking in his mind. You don't have to do this Naruto. The Kayubi rarely ever spoke his real name anymore. He only ever said it when he wanted Naruto to know he was dead serious. Knowing this when the Kayubi spoke Naruto would drop his musings and listen. Kayubi was his partner, and he was his. I know. Naruto said the words softly. Looking at the giant samurai castle ahead he knew it wouldn't be difficult to get in. Within the six years he'd been traveling he'd snuck in and out of the fortress a dozen of times. He'd gone in learning their techniques, understanding their beliefs, and at some point he'd gone in to create some sort of honor for himself. There were many stories to his travels not all of them so pretty, either way they ended with him here right now. All of his stories and travels led to this. This single mission that he had created. Then why are you doing this? The giant fox genuinely asked. Sometimes his container confused even him. Naruto chuckled. Looking at the snow-filled sky it reminded him of something. It was something that he held on to dearly. Sometimes it felt as if it was all he had to hold on to. I have an obligation Kurama, Naruto said using the fox's real name. It hadn't been too long into his journey that the fox had told him his name. It had been a changing point in their relationship, one for the better. One of these days I am going to wipe your memories of that child. Kurama said sighing in his cage. Over the years they had been traveling he had pondered his container. Of all the containers he could have gotten he received the on that had some kind of self-duty. He'd wondered if he'd have liked a selfish container better, one that had truly only cared for himself. Or maybe a self-titled one that just sat on his ass all day. That would have been nice too. Even still, looking at the man before him and watching him grow he wouldn't have wanted any other container but Naruto. He'd never admit it, but Kurama had become attached to the kid. Oh be quiet. He shushed. You liked her just as much as I did you stupid fox. She saved your furry ass as much as she saved mine. Kurama knew he was right. That girl had saved both of them. She had set Naruto back straight and she had been the miracle he had prayed for in those hard times. Yet she also caused him to remember. Kurama thought it was best Naruto didn't remember sometimes. All that was in the boy's past was pain. Pain wasn't something anyone needed to remember. If you go in there the chance of your identity being discovered. He let the rest of the sentence hang. He wanted Naruto to fill in the blanks for himself. Naruto sat still letting the wind blow by him. It wasn't as if he didn't know the consequences of his actions. Yet it was already too late to change courses. Long ago he had set off a chain event of reactions and now that he'd started he couldn't stop. He knew that more than anything. It's a possibility. His voice was even holding almost no emotion. Kurama sighed at the boy's apparent disregard for everything. He was acting as if he was prepared for all the consequences of going through with his plan. He knew he wasn't. Not in the slightest. Things like this just weren't that simple. Silence reigned between the two beings. Opposite ends of the spectrum one believed he was ready to take the step forward. The other believed they needed to take a step back again. Progression came with time not will. Why did I go and see Shikamaru? Naruto asked his friend. Even he didn't know what he heard in his voice asking it aloud. Was there resentment, bitterness, anger, sorrow? He wasn't sure. Maybe it was fear. What did Shikamaru represent? Simple. Shikamaru represented Konoha. So did that mean he was afraid to see Konoha again? You ask me as if I know everything kid. I can't always know what goes through your mind. Shaking his head at the boy the fox laid his head down on the green grass beneath him. It had been some time since Naruto had changed his dank mindscape into something much more comfortable for the giant had to admit that anything would have been better than the sewer and cage that he had previously dwelled in. Yet he never thought possible for what the boy had given him. Open grass and blue skies there was food for him to hunt and eat and then water to drink. As a being of chakra he shouldn't technically need any of it. It was still nice though. Even the bars had been replaced by a small collar. Naruto had really pulled through for him. The blonde watched a bird fly high in the sky. It looked like a little dot in the vast white ocean of the snow. He snorted before his eyes drifted to the ground. His mind swam in a sea of impossible questions. Have I really not changed at all? He reprimanded himself in whispers. His eyes came in and out of focus. He eyebrows furrowed in frustration. At all? Am I really still the same boy I was? His breaths became shallow. 
Small puffs of air appeared in front of the masked man in little storm clouds. Pathetic. Kurama closed his eyes sadly. It seemed as if another episode was to occur. It wasn't fair how much pain his container was in. Yet he knew better than anybody that there were some things that took more than time to heal. They had traveled so far, they had shared stories and memories, they had experienced more than Kurama thought any normal ninja would dream of. This boy here had really changed him. It hurt him to see him so in pain. You are still so angry kid, so angry and sad that you don't even realize it. Kurama's words rang clear in Naruto's head. The blonde boy shut his eyes from the world. Shaking his head furiously his hands roamed through his hidden blonde locks in frustration. It was like someone was squeezing all the life out of his heart. I'm going to sleep kid. Don't get into too much trouble. He knew his words were already lost to the boy. He was already too caught up in his past, but he couldn't bring himself to watch the boy tear himself in two. Naruto could help every single person in the world, change them for the better and make them see a different light. When it came to himself though it was like the young man locked himself in a prison and threw away the key. He wanted to shoulder his burden alone. A soundless scream passed through his Naruto's lips. Confusion and heartbreak seemed to play a melody within the sorrowful cry. Memories played in his mind. Over and over memories were all that stared him in the eyes. Everything all at once had come back to the forefront of his mind. The isolation as a child, the Sandane, Sasuke, Sakura, Kakashi, Pain, Gara, all of them back in an instant. It all seemed to be stuck on replay. Go away, he said to no one. I don't want these anymore. I don't want them, he yelled. Make it stop, please, his roar was deafening. Tears threatened to spill on his face, but he tore his mask off in a fit to reach the tears before they descended. He scratched at them refusing to let them fall. It shouldn't be like this. He had come to terms with his leaving so many years ago. He had come to terms with his life. He didn't want them to haunt him anymore. He just wanted them to go away. His face visible to the cool air he felt the breeze on his cheek. It was cold. His blue eyes were hollow even he knew that. He stopped looking into mirrors long ago. He couldn't stand the reflection that stared back at him. Who am I? He asked himself. His ears were ringing with a sound he didn't know and his head pounded into his skull. I am Naruto Uzumaki. Nodding he tried to give himself reassurance to his reality, to his truth. Yet another question burned in his mind. Who is Naruto Uzumaki? He didn't know. He didn't know who that man was anymore. Maybe once he had, but no longer. The bird that had been flying in the sky earlier came down and perched beside him. It looked at him questioningly. The memories were finally starting to fade. The ringing was faint and quiet. He licked his chapped lips. Taking a breath he steadied his breathing. There was something wrong with him. On a mental or psychological level maybe, but Naruto knew there was something wrong with him. He wouldn't weigh his needs on the balance with others though. He would live and he would die. Simple as that. The bird came closer to him. He shooed it away with his hands. Flapping its wings the tiny creature made a big show, but stayed where she landed. Hopping back and forth it stared at Naruto with beady eyes. Fuck you chicken, he cursed in irritation at the bird. Sighing to himself he realized that he was arguing with a bird. Favoring to now ignore the winged beast he took out a kanai and played with it in his hands. Closing his eyes he enjoyed the moment of peace he had, the moment of clarity. It wasn't often that he was to experience this anymore. And in the coming days there wouldn't be any more to have. Unconsciously he began to hum a melody he once knew as a child. He didn't really recall where he had heard the tune only that it made him feel better. It made him feel warm in these cold days. He had almost dropped his kanai when the annoying bird next to him began to sing along with him. His exposed blue eyes nearly bugged out of his face. The hell, Naruto said. When the bird had finished a round of the tune he would just start again. Slightly amused Naruto licked his lips again. Trying to whistle this time he failed miserably. It just didn't sound as pretty as when the bird did it. The bird seemed to agree as it stopped its singing. Hopping closer to him, it began to peck at his unsuspecting hand. Giving a small yelp of pain he grabbed the now bruised hand as the bird took off to the skies. Holding his still hurt hand he smiled gently. Stupid bird, he muttered. Standing up from the branch he'd been sitting on for the past two hours he jumped down to the snow-covered ground. He began the long walk to the fortress of the samurai. 
The cage summit would be starting soon and it seemed as if he was going to be a little late. His feet crunched loudly in the already hardening snow. Grabbing his mask he placed it securely back onto his face. You know you don't have to do this Naruto. Kurama's words from earlier drifted in his head. We can still just keep on running. You don't owe these people anything. Sighing Naruto spoke to himself. I know my friend oh how I know. The words were soft and gentle. His footsteps slowed and he seemed almost ready to stop, but with memories of a small young girl his next words kept his feet moving forward. I have an obligation. Naruto opened his eyes. Immediately he recoiled. Light shone in his face. It burnt his pale skin. Where was he? He couldn't really remember. Then again there were a lot of things he couldn't remember these days. His body was motionless as his eyes roamed the area calmly. He was on a street. It smelt vile as he watched people walk past. His body lay on a wall. His back propped against it he momentarily noticed that he was sitting in his own vomit. A wan smile crept onto his face. He remembered now. It had only taken a few moments. He had been at another bar last night. He had drunk more than he should have. He always did that now and as soon as he was intoxicated he always started fights. Last night had been bad. He had long since stopped using his ninjutsu sticking to all out brawling instead. It made him feel better that way. It helped him forget a little bit more. Either way when Naruto had picked a fight with a man last night he had gotten into more trouble than he needed. One man wouldn't have been a problem. One man and six of his friends were another story. They had beaten him in front of everyone. Then they took his money. They spat at his face calling him vulgar names. Then he remembered getting thrown out of the bar. From there Naruto figured he had just crawled to the wall and passed out. How long has it been? How long has it been since I abandoned Konoha? He felt dizzy. He couldn't remember the last time he had eaten. He didn't want to eat. In all honesty he didn't want to live. Naruto Uzumaki was a broken man. He'd lost his home, his family, his life. He had nothing. Was there a point in living when you had nothing to live for? He always asked himself this. After thinking about it he always came to the same answer. No. In the year that he had run away he couldn't recall more than a few memories. They all involved him getting drunk and then getting his ass handed to him. He couldn't really sleep for memories haunted his slumber. They were fading though. His memories were slowly leaving him. He was becoming man with no future and no past. It was what he wanted. He wanted to die. He didn't really know when he decided this, but now sitting on the ground he was sure of it. Right here. This is where I will die. Naruto felt something hit his head. Looking down he saw money on the ground. He didn't move to pick it up. This had happened often. People took enough pity toss some money, but not to really stop and help. Something he had come to understand was that the world was cruel. There weren't good people in this world. They did not exist. His beliefs back as a ninja had been naive and foolish. There was no peace in a world of hate. Hate was vile and cold. Everyone hated. No one wanted peace that was the thing. They were happy being cruel and hatefully. They were happy. At one time this realization would have infuriated Naruto, would have driven him to change the world. Yet Naruto was not the same boy he was a year ago. No, that boy had died long ago. Mentally he had died and only this hollow shell of a body remained. Soon even that would die. Now Naruto could care less what people did. Who they hurt, who they killed it didn't matter. It was all a cycle of hate. He couldn't stop it even if he wanted to. Lying on the wall Naruto closed his eyes. He did not plan to open them again. His skin had long since paled no longer the deep tan it had been. His blonde hair had lost its shine and was dirty with blood and sweat. His blue eyes were hollow. He wasn't really always there too caught up in his own thoughts. His body which had once been trained and molded into strength was weak. All the strength had left his arms and legs. By any bystander he already seemed dead. His body was lifeless as he sat unmoving. And if he were any normal person he would have been dead. But he wasn't normal. No matter how much he wished he was. Boy get up. Someone still wanted Naruto to live. Not for my well-being though. Naruto thought mirthlessly. Get up. The fox's voice was tired. Even he had a limit and Naruto had been pushing them. The only reason he still lived that he still breathed in this world was because the fox had kept him alive. After all, if he died the fox went with him. Would that be such a bad thing though? Wasn't the fox the source of his misery? The reason he'd been betrayed over and over and over. Maybe. 
Yet the more Naruto thought about it the more he thought that if they had really loved him, really acknowledged him then the fox wouldn't have mattered. Uzumaki, do something. He heard the fox hiss. The chakra being was so weak that Naruto knew it was an empty threat. So Naruto ignored the fox. He wanted Naruto to live. He wanted Naruto to live so that he wouldn't die. Naruto wouldn't play though. He was ready for the shadow's embrace. I don't have the chakra to keep you living forever boy. Your body is failing you or have you not realized that? The Kyubi was willing to say anything to convince the boy to live. He knew it was pointless, but he had to try. The fox refused to die such a meaningless death. It was beneath a creature like him. This was not how he would go out. Yet he realized how much of a toll it was keeping the boy alive. He wouldn't hold out much longer. Even the great nine tails was running out of chakra to heal the boy who constantly put himself through abuse. The past year for the blonde had not been pretty in the least. Deep into a depression the blonde was bleak. No longer was he the same boy that he had been in the village. There had been more than a few occasions that the fox thought he had lost the blonde. The first half of the year the blonde just wandered endlessly. At nights he would suffer from nightmares and during the day he would scream at seemingly nothing. The boy had all but lost his mind. Kayubi had long since realized that the pent-up emotions he had held as a child growing up had no reason to be held back anymore. So instead the dark emotions were now always on the forefront. There had been days when the blonde had refused to move just sitting there for weeks on end before he would once again get up and walk nowhere. He would pick meaningless fights and lose just for the thrill of it. The second half of the year was where things had turned ugly. In the first part Naruto had at least moved and ate and lived even if it was meaningless the second half of the year he just stopped. Stop trying, stop living. He teetered dangerously on the edge of insanity with death licking at his heels and Naruto had loved it. He'd laugh when nothing was funny. He'd start sobbing uncontrollably. He'd pick fights at the first person he saw when he woke from slumbers. Worse yet he began testing the Kyubi's limits. Smart enough to realize Naruto could do almost whatever he pleased and not die thanks to Kayubi's healing he began experimenting. He'd cut his wrists and legs with kanai into deep gashes. Then he would watch as Kayubi would hurry to heal them. He would go to the edges of cliffs smiling before taking leaps of fate. When he would talk to the fox on rare occasions he would watch on as the blonde went through tremendous mood swings. It would be one second he was angry at the fox. Fuck you asshole. I don't give a shit what you want fox. I'll do whatever I fucking please ya here? Then the next he would try to goad him. Naruto mused silently before the chakra being in his mind. How many times can I cut myself before you can't heal me? I mean for a being of chakra you're kinda shitty. Seriously who makes a fox the most powerful being in the world? That right there is a first class shithead. And then there was when Naruto came to him pleading and desperate. On his knees Kayubi would watch as he'd beg like a man with no pride. Please, please, just let me die, let me end it, why can't you just let me die? I deserve die, I'm worthless, please. The Kayubi was at a loss. There seemed nothing he could do. He watched a once proud enigma transform into a pitiful and lost man. They would die, the Kayubi could barely move himself these days. It was so much of an effort to keep the blonde alive. If the boy didn't find a reason to live then the story of the Naruto Uzumaki the Kayubi Jinchuriki would end much faster than some believed and there would be nothing the Kayubi could do to stop it. Naruto could feel his heartbeat. He could hear its low thrum in his ears. It lulled him in the darkness of his rest. The sounds of the streets were fading. The harsh reality of the world was leaving. He was ready to leave. He was ready to say goodbye. Hey mister. Someone tapped his leg. He kept his eyes shut. They would leave soon. They always leave. Hey mister are you okay? Come on wake up. Nudge, nudge. Again something tapped his leg more forcefully this time while they were at it. He couldn't hear his heartbeat anymore. The low thrumming in his ear faded. The sounds of the street blared once again. Naruto opened his eyes. A girl stood in front of him. A very young girl dressed in rags. Her porcelain white face was smeared with dirt. Her dark black hair was dirty and her clothes were falling off her back. Still her onyx black eyes stared at him worriedly. Go home kid, he croaked out. When was the last time he had heard his own voice? He couldn't remember. It sounded different. I don't have a home. The girl replied. Her eyes darted to the ground. Her eyes lost a little of their light. Naruto stared on with no compassion. Don't care. 
Go to wherever you piss then. Just leave me the hell alone. His compassion for others had died. The girl looked on defiantly. I can't go. You're sick. She said gently as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. You need food. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the girl. And you have food? He asked even though he knew the answer was no. I know where I can get some. I can't leave you here hungry mister. That just ain't right. Naruto looked on a little surprised. Why would she do something for him? Why would she try and show him kindness? Looking at her he saw that the young girl really couldn't have been more than eight. She herself looked deathly thin. If anyone needed a meal it was her. Something struck him about her though. She seemed oddly familiar to him in a way. Looking at her he felt something he hadn't felt in a long time. He felt sympathy. He swallowed his bitterness and spoke. Hey kid, don't worry about me okay? Go on and get yourself some food and go on back to wherever you sleep. In this world you watch out for no one else but yourself. His voice was softer this time. He was glad for that. The girl shook her head and smiled. Hey mister what's your name? She asked. Naruto's eyes flashed for a brief second. What was his name? He'd gone by so many now. Naruto? He said hesitantly. The name's Naruto. She laughed. Well Mr. Naruto you're wrong and I'm gonna prove it. Naruto felt himself genuinely smile. It was soft, gentle, and most importantly it was true. It had been a long time since he had smiled like that. The girl seemed gentle to a fault. I'm going to go get us some food okay? I'll be right back I promise. She got up and ran away just like that. Her raven hair flowed behind her. Naruto followed her with his eyes until she disappeared into the crowd. If she was smart she wouldn't come back. Deep down he thought he knew that she wouldn't come back. In this world people only thought of themselves. Kindness like that did not exist. As he looked out into the crowd a thought came to him. I never even got her name. Naruto laid his head back against the wall. He hadn't moved from his spot. He would lay here until he died so there was no reason to move. Sunset was at the heels of the sky and he watched on silently. I knew she wouldn't come back. It had been hours since the little girl he saw earlier had disappeared into the mass of people. He had told her not to come back and she had not. It was better this way. It was better that she learned that she should only watch out for herself now rather than later and get fucked over because of it. He had learned that way. He had learned the hard way and he would never be the same because of it. The fox had been silent for a while probably too tired to speak anymore. Naruto was tired too. His eyes were heavy and his body felt like stone. The fox couldn't heal him anymore. He had a feeling. It was finally over. This would be the night. He glanced at the fading sunset. The skies were heavy. Gray clouds misted in and out of the fading light. There weren't any people on the streets. Everything was silent. He realized how cold it was as the wind picked up. It's going to rain. He thought. Naruto didn't mind much. Rain was nice. It would be soothing. He'd feel no pain in the end. He closed his eyes. The shadows were calling to him. They were finally ready to take him. Louder and louder he heard them call his name. He felt the raindrops on his face. Soft and gentle not a downpour at all. His name was called louder. Mr. Naruto, let the shadows come. Let them take his pain away. Am I Mr. Naruto? He heard coughing. That wasn't shadows. His eyes snapped open. He looked out. The rain was coming harder now. It misted around him in a cloak. Mr. Naruto I came. He looked out. There not far from him was a small figure. Crawling. The figure was crawling on the ground. Kid? He called out. He thought he heard disbelief in his voice. She came closer into view. He wiped the rain from his face. Why was she crawling? Hey kid you shouldn't be out here in the rain. He called out to her. She came closer slowly. Inch by inch she got closer. He smelled blood. Why? Something was sticking out of her back. He strained his eyes to see. It looked familiar. I got the food Mr. Naruto. Just like I said I would I got the food. Her voice sounded weak. Weaker than it should have been. A kanai. It was a fucking kanai. The girl crawling in the rain stopped. He heard her cough. He heard her wheeze as she took a struggled breath in. Something snapped in Naruto. Move, his mind demanded. He tried to reach her. He tried to stand and go to her, but his body would not go. Move. She stopped coughing. She wasn't moving. He needed to go to her. Come on. Move damn it move. She needed him. She needed him to be by her. He needed to help. Mr. Na Naruto. He heard her barely whisper. His eyes widened. Move. He bellowed. His arm reached out first. 
It was painful. Was he really that weak? Naruto took a labored breath. His leg moved next. Arm, leg, arm, leg he crawled over to the fallen girl. It was raining harder now and the water beat on his back. It was absolutely freezing at this point. Hey kid, come on, I'm here kid. He said frantically. He picked the girl up with his arms and laid her gently in his lap. He couldn't stand. He didn't have the strength to do it on his own and it'd be impossible to do it with himself and the girl. He hunched, over her trying to shield her best he could from the rain. It was so cold. She was bleeding heavily. Her face was bruised and even in the rain he could see that. It looked as if she had been beaten. And the kanai in her back worried him. The girl opened her eyes. They were misty and seemed a little unfocused. She smiled at him. Her hand went into her clothing and she pulled out a dirty piece of bread. I told you I'd get the food Mr. Naruto. He smiled at her. There were tears in his eyes. He nodded at her. Yeah you did huh? He put his hand on her cheek before moving it down to the kanai. He gripped it tightly. Hey kiddo I gotta take this out okay? It might hurt a little bit. I promise I'll be real quick. He told her. The kanai looked as if it were lodged in her spine. That could cause problems worse than he feared. She nodded her head. Okay mister. Then we can eat. Definitely, he reassured her. Gripping the kanai he pulled it out in one swift motion. The girl didn't even so much as flinch. He knew his fears were realized then. The kanai probably severed her spinal cord. She would be paralyzed from the waist down. He tried to hold back a sob. Why? Why had she done something so small and insignificant for him? The girl seemed to notice his sadness. Hey Mr. Naruto I'm real sorry I was late. It's okay. Can you tell me what happened? I had to steal the food Mr. Naruto. I had to. I didn't have no money. I know it's wrong, but I had to get you food. She started laboriously. The shopkeeper caught me though. I told him I'd pay him back soon as I could, but he didn't listen. Naruto was silent. He held the bleeding girl in the rain. He didn't understand. He didn't ask the girl to get him food. He was ready to die. He'd been ready. Why? You didn't have to do this for me kid. He said softly, but his emotions raged. You didn't have to do this for me kid. It was his fault. It was all his fault. I had an obligation. She said it as if it were the most normal thing in the world. She was staring at the sky. The raindrops slid down her pale white skin. He noticed that her long black hair cascaded behind her and onto his lap. An obligation? You couldn't care for yourself Mr. Naruto, but I could help you. Therefore it was my obligation you see? She said softly. My mother told me that if you had the power to help someone who couldn't help themselves then it was your obligation to do so. You can only be truly strong when you're protecting others. Naruto eyes widened. What it meant to be truly strong. He hadn't thought about that in a long time. Your mom? Yeah. The little girl got a faraway look in her eyes. She died when I was littler. I miss her Mr. Naruto I miss her a whole lot, but I know she'd be proud of me. She closed her eyes and her breathing slowed. Naruto nudged her. Hey come on stay awake kiddo you can't go to sleep on me yet. He told her. He glanced around. There was no one in the streets. No one to help him. The raining slowed, but it seemed like it was getting colder. They were both shivering. Naruto tried to pull her closer to keep her warm. A thought struck him. Hey kid I never got your name. He couldn't believe he didn't know her name after all this. She got a sad look on her face. I don't have a name Mr. Naruto. What? He asked incredulously. My mother said that she couldn't give me a name. She said when I heard my name I'd know it. And you know I just haven't heard it yet. Her hand grasped his. She was freezing. Naruto didn't know what to say. She was going to die. He knew it, but he didn't want to accept it. She was too young. She was too innocent. Holding her close he began to yell, help. Someone please help. He looked through the streets. No one was appearing. No, no it can't end like this. Help, help please, please. He begged. Mr. Naruto it's okay. He looked down at the little girl. It wasn't okay. This was not okay at all. The rain had stopped. Naruto shut his eyes tight. It wasn't fair. This wasn't supposed to happen. He felt something on his nose. It was cold and light. Opening his eyes he looked to the sky. His breath puffed out and he could see the little cloud in front of him. It was snowing. Another drop fell on his nose and then more. He looked down on the girl in his lap. She was smiling. It was gentle and sweet. She wasn't in any pain at all. She was going to die, but she was going to die happy. Almost absent-mindedly he thought of someone else from another time long ago. 
She lifted her hands slowly towards the sky. A snowflake landed on her finger and melted. Naruto was surprised to hear himself speak. Haku, he said softly. Huh? The little girl said surprised. Your name? What do you think of Haku? He asked her. Haku, she said as if testing it out. Haku, a giant smile lit up her face. Haku, my name is Haku. Naruto smiled at her. Mr. Naruto my name is Haku. Her voice held uncontained joy. Thank you Mr. Naruto. Thank you. She started to cry. Naruto wanted to believe they were tears of happiness. Her voice got soft and it began to fade. Mr. Naruto I'm glad I met you. She said. She looked to the blonde's face. Raising her hand she touched Naruto's cheek trying to convey all of her emotions. I'm glad I met you to Haku. He leaned down and kissed her forehead lightly. Her hand fell from his cheek. Her eyes closed softly. For the first time in a long time Naruto cried for someone else. He cried as his heart felt like it was being ripped. He held her closely. It's funny how in his lifetime he had met two Hakus. And both times it was Haku that saved him. The first Haku had put him on the path of his Nindo. And the second Haku had put him back onto his path when he had gone astray. He wouldn't disappoint them. Not again. Not when he knew they were both watching over him. After all, he had a reason to live now. Naruto Uzumaki had an obligation to fulfill. He would protect the weak, those who couldn't protect themselves. He would protect them because he had the strength to do so. He would protect them in the memory of Haku. Both of them. That was his obligation. And he'd be damned if he didn't do a good job of it. That's all for now if you enjoy it then please like share and do comments.